coach Larry Coker and the faces of the defending national champions, the Miami Hurricanes. Number one team in the country is in Philadelphia this afternoon. Inside historic Franklin Field on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Penn relays and many great college and pro games have been held here in this great ballpark in Philadelphia. Today, the Big East comes calling as the number one team of the country, the Miami Hurricanes, take on the Temple Owls. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Sims, and we welcome John Kinjemi aboard the Big East crew here this afternoon in Philadelphia. When you think about Miami, yes, number one team of the country, think about their quarterback, Ken Dorsey. But this season's success right now is built on their running game. It's built from the backwards going to the front line, and these two backs have been sensational. Willis McGahee and Jason Gathers. Last week, Willis McGahee, 24 carries for 204 yards. That's fourth highest in UM history. Now, Jason Gathers, on the other hand, made the transition from wide receiver to running back, the position he played in high school, and he's done gangbusters. 35 carries for 271 yards, but look at the averages. 7.7 .7 for Gathers. McGahee at 8.8. .8. Touchdowns 2-1. to one. These guys guys are sensational and that offensive line they're saying in Miami they may be better than last year that's a scary thought it sure is and they had a bunch of All-Americans last year going against that O-line Temple University's got Dan Klecko leading the D-line they've got a big chore he needs a lot of help yeah and Bobby Wallace the head coach needs this guy to be hundred percent Dan Klecko the Big E selection last year five tackles and one tackle for a loss last week didn't play in the opener against Richmond but he needs to move around that defensive front try to confuse the Miami offensive line and stop this running game should be interesting. Number one, Miami against Temple. Temple trying to make a name for itself. And here come the Canes. They're in the Quaker City. Kickoff is coming up next. Glad you could join us for Big East football. Today's Big East game is being brought to you by ConAgra Foods. We set America's table at home and away. Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Hummer, check out the new H2 at Hummer.com. Hummer, like nothing else. And by Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your wealth. Good luck at Center City in Philadelphia. That's City Hall in the middle with William Penn on top and just a little west of there by about three miles or so. The Miami Hurricanes about to take on the Temple Owls. And let's join the third member of our broadcast team, Greg Roberts, down on the field. Good afternoon, Dave. Good afternoon, everybody. Coming up this afternoon, the Miami Hurricanes will be without one of their main offensive threats. That's receiver Andre Johnson. He underwent surgery on his shoulder earlier this week. They went into the left shoulder and cleaned it up. Now, Andre Johnson has been playing with a bum shoulder, and they figure now would be a good time to give him some rest. And they expect Coach Larry Coker says that he will return to action for next Saturday's game with Boston College. And with him out, that means some other players going to have to step it up, specifically number seven, Ethnic Sands. Also, Coker says Kevin Beard and Roscoe Parrish should see time. And the freshman, Akeem Jala and Ryan Moore, should play plenty this afternoon as well. Dave? Hi, right, Greg. Thank you very much. And it's so impressive to watch Larry Coker's backs and receivers come out for pregame warm-ups. It is they fit a mold, the Miami mold of tall, rangy receivers, a couple of smaller, fast guys. And this is what they, the part of the tradition that Miami's maintained over the years. And there you see the success of Larry Coker in his second season at Miami, 14 and 0 and 7 and 0 in Big East play. But he's got these guys believing from last year. There's, this is really a carryover from last year's championship season. These guys want to repeat, and he's the guy leading them. Bobby Wallace going to be celebrating his 48th birthday coming up on September 17th. Really has done a real good job. The numbers don't show it, but this program has been in the dumps for a while, but now they've got to a point now where they've had a couple of four-win seasons, and they're making some progress. Deep to receive this opening kickoff for the Miami Hurricanes is Jason Gethers. Jason's out of Delray Beach, Florida. Cap Pot Glumbo is going to kick it off. 
at a 39 yard field goal last weekend. We're underway. Short kick. Gathers at about the 8 to the 20. And taken down from behind by number 11. That's Terrence Belvin. Terrence Belvin on the tackle for the Temple Owls. How about Ken Dorsey? Heisman Trophy candidate. He's 21 and 8 as a starter. On the season, 53 percent. He's from the Oakland, California suburb of Orenda. First play from scrimmage for the Hurricanes will be from the 22 yard line. And they give it up the middle on a big hole up the middle. First and 10 and more for the Miami Hurricanes. Willis McGahee. Now you see why he's averaging 8.8 yards per carry. That is a big gain out to the 35-yard line. That's a game of 13. Kellen Winslow at tight end. Look for him to go deep. He's a very talented receiver. Yes, the son of the Hall of Famer. On the offensive line, Brett Romberg, he anchors a very good offensive unit that has provided a lot of running room for these Canes. First and 10. It's called the 35-yard line. Dorsey throwing to the wide side of the field. And he's got ethnic sands to about the 41 yard line. That picks up six. Check that. They get to that. That was Kevin Beard. That's his first catch of the season. First catch of the season. And defensively, Dan Klecko and Rodney Wormley on the corners have to make something happen in stopping that running attack. The linebackers, J.D. Nichols, 14 total tackles and five solos on the season. And in the back end, Terrence Leftwich, one pick and 12 total tackles, has to gamble a little bit on the corner. Second down for the Miami Hurricanes from the 41. Second and four play action for Dorsey. Got time. There's your tight end. And knocked down. There's a play made in the secondary by Temple. That was Lacton Thompson. He's from nearby Norristown, Pennsylvania. Started the last couple of years. Nice break up there. Yeah, good job that time by Temple secondary. Trying to gamble a little bit. Looked like Ken Dorsey had the corner, but a great play from behind. Jamal Wallace gets that right hand in there. Trying to go to the big tight end, Kellen Winslow. But a good job. Great timing by the secondary that time for Temple. They were a little hesitant last week against Oregon State. The coaches want them to be more aggressive defensively. Third down and four for Ken Dorsey. Quick snap. And they got a first down and more. First down into Temple Territory at the 44 yard line. That's Roscoe Parrish, the redshirt freshman from Miami Senior High School. First and 10 for the Canes. Roscoe comes into the game three catches for 61 yards, a smallish target at 5'9", 157, a redshirt freshman, but he's got tons of speed, Dave. They want to get him the football a little bit more. Uh, today, Roscoe, you see on the season, four receptions for 77 yards. Ethnic Sands, his opposite number, bottom of your screen on this first and 10 from the 44. Parrish in motion. Give it to the up back, and that's McGahee. Short gain on the play, about two yards. Pretty good help inside. Pleco leading the way, and Harry Almonte, who's the Al safety. Talk about this uh, Temple defense in a 4-2-5 set. Yeah, a little bit unusual. They like to get eight guys in the box and try to pressure, and they want to pressure to start up front with Dan Pleco. Last week, five tackles, one for a loss, but they they really been decimated up front with injuries. A lot of guys getting nicked, and that first play really showed Miami's offensive line strength. Temple has to do a good job up front. McGay, he two carries, 15 yards so far. Dorsey going to throw it again. He's got time. Swinging outside to McGay. He makes one man miss. And then finally brought down at the 39 yard line. And that'll be a gain of three. And Klecko gets up limping. That's not a good sign. Yeah, not a good sign for Temple's defense. Dan Klecko came into the game not 100%. It looks like that right ankle giving him some problem. You like Temple running to the football that time. You saw a lot of eight, nine jerseys around the football. Brings up Miami in a third down with five to go. Third down play coming up. There you see Klecko trying to get to the quarterback and going against Brett Romberg. Out of the gun for Dorsey and company on this third down at five. Good protection. Steps, throws, and got Kellen Winslow 30 and hammered down at the 25 yard line. That's left in Thomas Thompson on the tackle. First and 10 for Miami. 
14 yards on the pickup. Well, right off the line of scrimmage, Dave, the quickness was where Kellen Winslow gets all of his separation. You see Thompson chasing the entire way, throws number 81 Kellen Winslow to the ground, but Dorsey always has terrific protection and great timing in the pass offense. Wanted to go down the field, but saw the big tight end on the dig route. Big gain for the Canes on third down. Dorsey having a good start. There's Winslow's numbers, 4, 5, 33 yards. Ninth play of this drive, going for it on the out and dropped. At the 11-yard line, wide open was Kevin Beard, the junior from Plantation, Florida. Miami's already picked up three first downs in this opening drive. Temple rolling the dice a little bit on first down, getting backed up in their territory on the 25. Miami just with a two-receiver route, as you said, a pure drop. And they've dropped some balls this week in practice, talking with Rob Chizinski and Larry Coker during the week. They want to improve in that aspect. There you see Ken's numbers early, four of six for 33 yards. Pretty good percentage pass here this year, too, 53.3%. They get him a here on the outside. Got to the edge. Great pick. Got the 15 penalty flag. The yardage is good for a first down, down to the nine-yard line, and the penalties against Temple. Miami's going to be looking at a first and goal. They may get some blocking uh, downfield on Miami, a hold. It looked like on the corner, the receiver. It might have been number nine, Kevin Beard. Just on the perimeter, it looks like he had initial good contact and then he went down to the legs and looked like he, he got caught for the holding. Our referee today is Dan Worrell. Oh, oh, holding, honey offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Line judge is Dennis Guerra. Field judge is Robert Solikowski. The, refer the referee's Jack Kramer. Beg your pardon, the umpire's Dan Worrell. Yeah, on the outside, David, you can see here, good initial block, and then he goes for the armbar takedown on the right leg. That won't get it done, and really didn't need to do that because McGahee already had the corner. Absolutely. Second down play. Second and ten. And here's the second back. That's Gathers, and a nice play in the backfield. Klecko is back in. Klecko got a piece there. A hold down Jason Gathers. With Klecko, as we mentioned, he's a strong player up front. Benches over 500 pounds, but shows some toughness there. He missed a couple plays, gets right back in the mix. And then on second down, trying to track down, trying to slow down this Miami offense early in this football game. Here's a big play for Temple. Third down and 11 at the 26 so far. Miami two for two on third down conversions. Dorsey's got two receivers to his left. They'll run it straight up the middle with McGahee. Across the 20. And he's down close to being about a yard and a half shy of a first down. He had to get to the 15. Temple bowing their backs a little bit after Miami crossed the 25. Helped out by a holding call, but a, a nice call by Miami. They spread the Temple defense out. They try to gash him up the middle with McGahee. They get in better position for this field goal try. Todd Seavers is in for... 35 yards on the field goal from the right hash. He was the Big East Special Teams Player of the Week last week. And how about that? He misses wide to the left. So Temple has withstood the first possession by the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, Seavers kicking. If there's any win today, Dave, he kicked into it. Just like he looked like he pulled it off the start. You see Larry Coker telling Todd not to worry about it right now. But that was a good drive. Opening drive for Miami. Timeout on the field. When we come back, Temple will get the ball for the first time against the number one team in the country. Back here at Franklin Field, Big East football, number one Miami taking on Temple. This is an important drive for the Temple Owls after watching Miami have the ball for almost five minutes and coming away with a missed field goal. Keep it on the ground, Sharps. And he's taken down from behind by Cornelius Green. Quarterback is Mike McGann from suburban Philadelphia. Havertown, PA, went to St. Joseph's Prep, where he was an outstanding quarterback. He's a youngster that perfect world. David Brock, the offensive coordinator, would like to see him play 18 months from now when he had a heck of a lot of experience. We got you, we got you, we got Second down and eight at the 22 for the Owls. Four-man rush for Miami. They run a quarterback draw. One of the things that David Beard talked about, for us to compete against Miami, we have to play a perfect game. Go, go. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Jack Kramer, our referee, is bringing up the speed on who's playing for Temple Terrence Stubbs, a dangerous receiver. They'll line him up all over the field. 
That O line's anchored by Donnie Klein out of Menisquan, New Jersey. The Temple backed up second down at 13 at the 17 yard line. Double wides to both sides from again out of the gun. Throws short. And not much of a gain up to about the 17 yard line. That was Terrence Stubbs. Up front from Miami, William Joseph. He's the anchor, the pillar of strength. 6'5, 297, and he has six total tackles on the season. Jonathan Vilma, not big in stature, 6'2, but 12 total tackles. And he was a big presence last year in that national championship season. And Maurice Sykes had the big interception against Florida, 97 yard return, the only one in that backfield that is a junior. One yard gain for the Owls on that pass. Third down and 12 at the 18. On the season, the Owls at 45% efficiency. McGann running for his left, got a lot of open field. It closes quickly as he gets it across the 25 to the 26 and leave him about three yards short of a first down. That's the thing, Mike McGann's gonna feel like he has something today, but it's gonna close rather quickly because of the great team speed of Miami, both offensively, defensively, and special teams. When he sees something down the field, he's gonna have to let it go and make it happen. A good job that time, eluding the bad play, getting it back to the line of scrimmage. Garvin Ringwelski, his numbers. Got a long of 42 this year. And Miami always has a dangerous kick return game. High kick, it's a hanger. Ethnic Sands, fair catch signal, makes it at the 32 yard line. So that's a punt of 42 yards, no return. Miami will get it for the second time this afternoon when we get back. Now, welcome back to Franklin Field, everybody. Greg Roberts with you here. And now it's time for the Conagra flavor of tailgating report. Every week we bring you up close to the weekly autumn ritual that is tailgating, brought to you by Conagra. And this week we're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what could you do in Philadelphia other than get a big Philly cheesesteak or one of these, an Italian sausage? John can Jimmy and Dave eat your heart out. You guys <laughs> up there working hard. I'm going to chew on this Italian sausage for a little while so you guys go back to work. All right, Greg, thank you very much. Miami putting it in play for the second time. Sun breaking through here at Franklin Field. Dorsey, four of six for 33 yards. McGahee, three rushes for 24. Kane's had it for 11 plays last time out. Here's Dorsey under pressure, throws short. He's got McGahee. McGahee to midfield and taken out of bounds. And a flag late. That was a late hit by Terrence Leftwich with McGahee clearly out of bounds. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit against the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Say so a tackle on the 15 to that. And this tailgate report brought to you by ConAgra Foods, your official tailgate partner. We set America's table. Boy, bad decision on the sideline, Dave, with the, a nice uh, move by Ken Dorsey, buying some time and a missed tackle up front, and then a, just a terrible decision by Terrence Left, which is senior, the cornerback. Just let him go out of bounds, and you live to play another day. Now you add 15 onto a big gain. 18 yards on the gain, and then another 15 on the personal foul. They give it on an end around to Kevin Beard, and Beard is taken down by Jairo Almonte. <laughs> Beard made his first catch of the season in that first possession and Almonte transfer from State University of New York and Canton. He's out of JFK High School in the Bronx, New York. Yeah, playing that out position, a good job by Almonte coming from the inside out. Looked like Beard had a chance if Ethnic Sands pins a block in on the corner, but good speed by Temple's defense early. Second down and eight at the 31 for Miami. First quarter action here, 7-10 to go. Here's Dorsey going to throw. Got time, steps and finds Winslow, 20, 15, 10, nice move. Dives to the four yard line, first and goal Miami. Kellen Winslow, tight end, wide receiver speed. He has emerged this year, 
13 yards per catch. He doubled it on that one with a gain of 26. And credit the guy pulling the trigger. Look at the poise of Ken Dorsey staying in the pocket, constantly stepping up as he's going down, finds his big tight end, Kellen Winslow. And then you see the speed of Kellen Winslow on the outside. He's 6'5", 230, only a sophomore. But watch Dorsey step up and say, hey, I got my tight end. Let me flip it outside, make a big play with my arm. Great decision and great poise by the quarterback. The young man redefining the tight end position out of the eye. And again, he sweeps, picks up about two. Now Monte knifed in to make the tackle. Second down and goal for Miami. And they place that ball just inside the one. Well, in the open, we talked about this offensive line being dominant and the guys coming in from the backfield, either Willis McGahee or Jason Gathers. That time, a good surge off the left side and McGahee really running tough off tackle. Good job up front by the O-line. Temple coaching staff said we have to play a perfect game and here this drive aided by a late hit McGahee looking finding touchdown Miami Hurricanes it's six nothing nice patience that time by Willis McGahee a great drive aided by a bad penalty by Temple Terrence Leftwich but McGahee goes in for the score and gets Miami on the scoreboard second rushing TD of the season for Willis McGahee out of Central High School in Miami Todd Sievers, senior from Ankeny, Iowa. Four-year performer. Perfect on that point after. So 6.05 to go first quarter. And the nation's defending national champion and number one team in the country gets a Willis McGay. He touched down from a yard out. And the Canes have a 7-0 lead here at Franklin Field against the Temple Owls. You're watching Big East football from Philadelphia. Drive, wasn't it, John? Yeah, awesome drive, and especially set up by this offensive line when they go in for the score. Take a look, 87 and 23, Brandon Seabald and Quatrain Hill. Watch the kick out by 87 Seabald, and then you see Haji Razuli up there, and there's a great block at the point of attack by Hill. The fullback, 23, enables Willis McGahee to go in for six. Winslow, a 26 yard catch. You have the 15 yard late hit, made it easy for the Canes. They go five plays, 67 yards in just a minute, 40 seconds. Yeah, making it look easy. Here's Severs to kick off. And this one, they take it right at the goal. Oh boy, off his chest, look out, wide open. It's like Miami's got it. Miami has recovered. It was Glenn Sharp for the Hurricanes recovering. Just a nightmare for the Temple Owls. That was the last thing they needed to happen. Just don't want to do this after a long drive by Miami. And not to make fun of anybody, but you know, you could poke an eye out doing this day, trying to catch it with your face mask. Take a look at this right off the helmet. <laughs> the ball just bounced towards Miami, oh, boy, and it's oh, a boy. it's an unfortunate break for Temple. But Miami, they did a great job covering kicks and trying to create turnovers in their first two games. They create another one, and just a nice job of coverage by the Hurricanes. That was Lawrence Wade, a sophomore from Washington D.C., and nobody cashes in much better than the Miami Hurricanes. Talk about short field, first and ten, McGahee gets to about the eight-yard line. So this drive starts just outside the 10. Clark Clown and counting down at 539. Glad you could join us. We're at historic Franklin Field, the campus of the University of Pennsylvania. Temple Owls coming from Crosstown to play a home game here. I'm Dave Sims and John Kinjemi and Greg Roberts at 7-0 Kings. And Miami knows how to do some damage once they get inside the red zone. Second down play. And almost had an opportunity to pick it off. A little bit behind Winslow. And covering on the play for Temple was left in Thompson. Yeah, nice play by Thompson that time. Number eight, the strong safety. His job most of this afternoon will be on Kellen Winslow. Ball was behind, but it gave an opportunity for Thompson to get in and try to make an interception. There you see 13 tackles this season for the strong safety, the senior. Wide side of the field for Dorsey. He sends Beard at that long line with Joel. Throws into the end zone. That's good for Miami touchdown. Kevin Beard. And it's 13-0 Miami. 
But this is all on the wide receiver right here. Kevin Beard with an exceptional catch going across the middle. And in the great concentration of going across the middle, Ken Dorsey would not have, if he'd have had this throw over, he'd have put it a little bit more into the chest, but a great catch on the touchdown. So the mistakes early on here for Temple as Cedars banks through the extra point. And at the 5-11 mark, it's 14-0 Canes. They come in more than five touchdown favorites. And they get on the board Kevin Beard's first TD catch of the season. He had two last year. And they take advantage of the opportunity given by the kick return. Great block by Willis McKay. You know, you talk about his running, but on the corner on Wormley, and then a, an awesome job of catching the ball over the middle. There were three or four red jerseys right in the middle of the football field. Ken Dorsey get, put it close. Kevin Beard made it six. Ken Dorsey, there you go right there, Dave. Ken Dorsey happy about that touchdown pass. He's got nine TD passes on the season. Dorsey's done nothing but win at Miami, 28-1, 18-0 in the Big East. Right now, let's take a moment to thank our Big East corporate partner, the folks from Cooper Tire. Proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tire, don't give up a thing. Yeah, you mentioned Ken Dorsey, 28 and 1 coming in. Winning percentage of 966, just incredible. 43 seconds on that drive. Seavers, a busy man. Coming into today's game, nine of his 14 kicks went for touchbacks. McConan takes this one. This is McConan Fenton, one of the better return guys in the Big East Conference, takes it to the 22 yard line. And he's brought down by Darrell McGlover, a backup linebacker. John, it's all about getting an opportunity and make it happen and doing it quickly. Yeah, and doing it very quickly. The quick strikes from Miami. The average TD drive, a minute 13. It's incredible. 13 of 15 TD drives have lasted less than two minutes, and six of those have lasted less than one. Today, they're averaging one, one minute and 12 seconds. So when they get the football, they like to deliver and put it in the end zone, and that makes Larry Coker a very happy head coach. They get you on the ropes. They try to knock you through as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Like a redo. It looks like offsides against Miami. They'll bring this back, and I think Temple's going to have Miami re kick it. Exactly what it is. For so Bobby Wallace's club, down two scores. And they've had their share of mistakes. The late hit and now the fumble, both proven very costly. <laughs> And last year, you know, Miami came into the game and Temple did a good job of controlling the game early and it was 14 nothing going to halftime. This one has a little bit different flavor to it. Only five minutes left to go in the first quarter. Miami already up two touchdowns and Temple needs to answer. They need to put together a couple first downs and cross the 50 yard line, get some rhythm on offense. Offense has run just four plays for the outs. Yeah, you can't get any rhythm doing that. Ooh, boy, that's tough. They really haven't had the football. That's right. And the thing now for for the Owls, they got to dig. You know, it's one of those things the coaches talk about all the time. But you, you really have to take it upon yourself to dig down and get going and re-energize and try and, and pick up the fight again. Yeah, we talked about them playing the perfect football game and talking about Temple. And so far, only penalties and a couple turnovers. Or the one turnover on special teams have really hurt them. Severs didn't get that one. Oh, baby, what a hit! Oh, that was some hit. Looked like Sonori Moss down there yeah. on the special teams. A younger brother of uh, Santana Moss, and he got a free one and unloaded. Check this out. He almost picks it up right off the air. Great job of hustling down those flyers down on the outside in special teams. Larry Coker told us during the, during the week when we spoke with him, that was the one thing he was most impressed with against Florida was the speed of his kickoff cover team. They went down with reckless abandon, and they were putting a hat on somebody, and they're right there. Sonori Moss, not a big guy, 5'8", 160. 63, only a freshman, but making his impact on special teams. Sean Zarda was the young man who paid the price for the Temple Owls on that one. Sean's a freshman out of Succasano, New Jersey. First and 10 for Temple at the, their own 16 yard line. Just under five minutes to play, first quarter. McGann, out pass, and he's got a completion to two Tonato Sharks down the sideline. Jonathan Vilma, the linebacker, catches him. He hit him out of bounds, a late hit. So Temple gets a break. A nice game 
out past the 40 yard line plus he had the 15. So that's a gain of 14 yards. And that's a nice throw. throw. That's 24 nice throw. yards on the play. And now that sure was. So a 16 yard game, stand corrected. And now the personal Dead foul. Ball. Personal foul, gets the defense. Late hit out of bounds, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Great job on the outside by Sharps. Making one man miss at the point of attack. Then he shows you the speed. Stepped out of bounds actually early, a couple yards earlier than Jonathan Vil Vilma delivers the blow out of bounds. Just like defensively when Temple did the same thing. Left which hit a Miami player out of bounds. Now Jonathan Vilma gives 15 more yards to this Temple offense. Miami had 14 penalties last week in their annihilation of Florida. Already three penalties today. That's one of the things that Larry Coker wants to improve. Look out. Down goes McGann. Boy, that was an easy sack for William Joseph, the senior out of Edison High in Miami. First sack of the season for Mr. Joseph. And you can't put that on Mike McGann. That offensive line was just beat right up front. Anthony Bolden, 66, the swinging gate on the right side. Never got a piece of the big Miami defensive tackle. And you see 94, William Joseph. Larry Coker mentioned to us he was very happy he stayed for his senior season. He could have went to the NFL, thinks he projected himself a second rounder last year after last season, maybe a first rounder coming in to this year. Loss of eight on that sack, second down and 18. And there's Joseph way off sides. So he giveth and taketh away in consecutive plays. Upside, defense, contact foul, five-yard penalty, still second down. So Temple picks up a five. Be sure to join us next Saturday, noon Eastern time. Rutgers Scarlet Knights travel to beautiful Heinz Field, the Battle of the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Rutgers and Pittsburgh, Saturday, 21st of September, noon Eastern. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Second down and 13 now for the Owls. Ball's at the 42-yard line. Overload the far side of your screen here. Temple looking across midfield for the first time. Go, 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 Trying to go, go. option McGann. Boy, he does a nice job. There was nothing there. And he's able to pick up about five yards. Actually, it's about three yards because he was so deep, but that's a that's a plus at least. Well, we talked about not making the bad play for Mike McGann. That could have been a disaster. Miami came right into the offensive backfield. He pitches that ball now. That's either a fumble or it's going the other way, but Mike shows great presence to hold on to the football, then cuts it back to the inside and makes something out of nothing. Now you got a third and seven instead of maybe a, a third and ten or a third and eleven for Bobby Wallace. That could have been ugly. Miami on the board, McGahee a one-yard run, Dorsey to Beard a nine-yard pass. All in quick fashion here in the first quarter, 14-0 Canes. From a 48-yard line, swing pass after Sharps, makes a nice catch. Oh, look at that closing speed. My goodness gracious. Sean Taylor, the free safety, the sophomore from Gulliver Prep in Miami. Wow. He was shot out of a cannon. Sean Taylor coming up, as you said, out of Gulliver Prep in Miami. 12 total tackles, and watch the distance that he controls. A great catch, first of all, by Tenardo Shops. But watch the closing speed on 26. Sean Taylor, then he puts the hat on him. Just an awesome, awesome tackle on the outside by Sean Taylor. Hey, John, how about this? No gain. Yeah. First punt for Ringwelski went 41 yards. What a great job that was. Ethnic Sands deep to receive this punt. Sands last week handled four or five punts, garnered 48 yards. Ringowski hangs one high. Sands has got some help, but he'll let it go. Goes the right thing. He was inside the 10. How many times have we seen that mistake made both in pro and college? You're inside the 10, a guy tries to make a catch. Too many times. 52 yards on that punt. Miami's going to get the ball at their own 20 yard line. Ken Dorsey going down as one of the all time quarterbacks. 
at the University of Miami. It's a lot to like in this package. There's a lot to like about the combination of Kellen Winslow and Ken Dorsey early, hooking up one after one time after another. First on the left side, then the right side, the big play, and Ken Dorsey finding a great catch on the outside by Kevin Bearden. That's a senior leader. He's done it as a sophomore, as a freshman, as a junior, and now a senior. He's just been spectacular. There you see the numbers on the day: seven of ten for 93 yards and one touchdown. So for Miami, this is their ninth play. Of the game. They've already got a 14 nothing lead in the game. He keeps his balance, does a nice job, picks up nine. It'll be second down and one on that play. One guy who's getting a lot of action inside, Jairo Almonte and JD Nichols, both linebackers. They got a tough job today. Yeah, tough job for the linebackers and especially the defensive backs. They're going to have to come up and support the run because that Miami offensive line, a huge hole that time for Willis McGahee. McGahee picked up nine on that play. He's got eight carries, 53 yards, and a touchdown already. Parrish in motion. McGahee's got the first down. Rodney Wormley made the tackle. He's a redshirt freshman out of Oxon Hill, Maryland. Let's go down to Greg Roberts. Guys, we know Willis McGahee's outstanding on the football field, but he's not bad in the classroom either. Did you know he's now published? He did a paper for a class project on the history of Miami football. Professor liked it so much, submitted it for publication in the university's Arts and Sciences magazine. His next piece of work is how to come out of nowhere and be a superstar. Guys? <laughs> well, isn't that the truth? There's Dorsey, middle screen, McGahee, 35, 40. Close the first down yard, but he did get the first down. He crossed the 42 yard line. Gain of 10. Well, you can see the versatility of Willis McGahee running the football between the tackles. He can catch the football and make big plays. He's averaging 132 yards per game. And you can see a great middle screen set up. Offensive line flushing everybody outside. McGahee just slips behind the big offensive line. Nice cut following uh, Carlos Joseph, 76 down the field. And that'll move the chains again for this Miami offense with 30 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Terrence Leftwich had to come over to make the tackle. Dorsey going to throw it. Deep drop. He's in trouble. Coco had him and slowed him up and then got him. He got some help from Rodney Warner. First sack of the day for the Owls. And that's the first sack of the season for Dan Klecko. Yeah, it registers his first sack. Did a nice job of never stopping his pursuit of Ken Dorsey. Off the right side of your screen, you see Big 73 beating number 77. Chris Myers to the point and gets a lot of help by Tyrone Ditzel as well. But a good job by Dan Klecko pursuing the quarterback and getting Kenny Dorsey. That's the end of the first quarter here at Franklin Field. Dan Klecko gutting it out with the bad ankle right now. It's all Miami. 14 0 Willis McGahee showing some terrific form. A lot of room to run. The stakes killing Temple. Two scores. Miami leads. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Philadelphia, everybody. Big East football, a statue of Rocky outside the spectrum. But you know what's a crime? They have a statue of a fictional heavyweight champion <laughs> and no statue of a real hero, Joe Frazier, who's from Philadelphia. It. That's a crime. Here in our game at Franklin Field, number one Miami leads Temple 14-0. The stat numbers pretty much reflect the score as well. The turnover was cashed in by the Miami Hurricanes. Wade fumbled the kickoff and was turned into a score rather quickly. Second down at 14 at Miami's 38 yard line. Klecko is offside. There's a penalty flag. Dorsey's got time. Slings it over the middle. Got a man at the 40 to the 36 yard line. That's Roscoe Parrish. That'll be a first down for the Kings. Boy, he threw that up his back foot. It was all arm. Yeah, he sure did. He stepped into it coming up into the pocket. Ken Dorsey has good, does a good job of, of usually setting his feet and stepping into the throw. Offside, defense, penalties decline, first down. But he's got great timing in the pass offense. That time he didn't need to set his feet. He knew he had Parrish coming like a, a bat from the right side. Watch Parrish just slings it over the middle, and he's just great timing over the middle. Man coverage, Roscoe Parrish, they want to get him the football six, seven, eight times today. You can see why he's got great speed. He redshirted. He was on the scout team a year ago. My goodness, they think he's a big star in the making. Play action again. Dorsey steps, throws it, under throws Parrish this time, who had a step on a defender, Jamal Wallace. Also running down there too, John. You had Kevin Beard. 
Yeah, I think there's some miscommunication on the outside. I think he was looking for Roscoe to break on the outside a little quicker. He took it down about 25, 30 yards before he even made a move. So they uh, they discussed that, and Parrish should go to the sidelines and run it a little bit better next time. Oh, the talent they have at Miami. Yeah, there's tons of depth on the outside. Sands and Beard come to the bottom of your screen. Beard. And he caught that on the short hop. Little flank the screen. Ethnic Sands is trying to throw a block. Penalty flag on the play. And they'll get a hold against the Miami Hurricanes. Fourth penalty today for the Caves. You mentioned it earlier, Dave, 14 penalties last week against Florida. And that, that really upset Larry Coker. He said, we had 14 penalties and three interceptions. Those are the things I want to correct going into this week. Yes, I want to put it on a good performance, but I don't want to make sure we cut down on Get this. the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. Officially, that's the fifth penalty today. So that will back up the Canes just outside the... 46 yard line. I'd look for Miami right here to get to Kellen Winslow. He was open often and coming up across the middle on the flat route. I'd look for Ken Dorsey maybe get some of this 20, second and 20 right now, get some of this yardage back by going to his tight end. Winslow lines up tight end to the right side. They'll come out of the gun. And all kinds of movement. Pleco trying to anticipate. Also Tyrone Ditzel, number 98. And the headlinesman Troy Grace, I judge Patrick Garvey, and the back judge Greg Steves working with re referee Jack Kramer. Upside, defense, contact foul, five yard penalty, still second down. Brother, they give up, and now again, watch this one. There's Klecko trying to anticipate. Yeah, a lot of bodies moving up front, and the first one to move was Dan Klecko trying to anticipate that snap count. Sometimes you can make that mistake on second and 20. You, you know, you're only going to give up five yards. Still in a bad situation for the offense. And there's the guy that started it all right there. Big one of the, Joe. One of the great players in Temple and New York Jet history. Joe Klecko, All-American here. All-Pro at several positions with the Jets. Dorsey throws underneath to McGinley. Terrific pressure by Klecko. Forced that Aaron throw. And that's what uh, Temple has to do up front. They have to create some kind of havoc in that Miami offensive backfield. You can see Dan Klecko not 100% limping, but does a great job of pursuing. Got a great jump on the snap count from the right side. Ken Dorsey trying to look down the middle of the field, feels the pressure, tries to elude it by sidestepping to the left. But Dan Klecko, the man on the spot for the Temple Owls right there, great pressure by number 73. Dan Klecko and his guys better be in shape. This is the 10th play of this drive that Artificial turf radiating a lot of heat on this hot day in Philadelphia. Third down at 15 at the Temple 41. Pretty good protection for Dorsey. Stepping, throwing out a man wide open. Paris escapes 20 yard line, 15. Spins through down to the 11 yard line. First down, Miami. 30 yards on the pickup. That's some play. Well, Ken Dorsey's not 28-1 as a starter for nothing. Watch him elude the pressure, but has the patience to know where everybody is. Roscoe Parrish was all by himself on the Temple sideline. Makes Terrence Leftwich Mitch miss, and then watch the move here just for a couple extra yards. Roscoe Parrish is only 5'9", 157, but he can make you miss on the outside. Once he gets some space, watch the move right there, the spin move. Then he gets another 10 yards just by being aggressive. Tell you what, he's got three catches, 71 yards. Here's a delay. McGahee, McGahee into the secondary, down to about the six-yard line. Terrence Leftwich which on the tackle for the outs. Well, this is where Miami likes to put the hammer to you. They'll bring in a couple tight ends and try to mow you down. And just when you, you get tucked in there, they'll tuck it, fake it, and bring it back out to one of the tight ends for a touchdown. But Miami in control right now, 14-0. Second down and five at the six-yard line. Tight end, Eric Winston in motion. Again, trying to sweep it. Finds a hole. Great cut. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. That's how you run a power sweep. You can remember watching old films of uh, Vince Lombardi. You get everybody out, and he cut it up in the alley. And that's exactly what he did. That's you remember exactly that, did. I remember the chalkboard talk, right? In the alley, that's for sure. Willis McGahee with authority to make it 20-0 Miami. 
long drive by the Hurricanes. They go 80 yards. Here's Seavers for the point after. So with 13 17 to go here in the second quarter, Kent said that it's a big surprise. McGahee and the Canes with a 21 0 lead. McGahee's second touchdown this afternoon, three, third on the season, and this was easy. He made the cut, he gets pay dirt. Canes lead by three scores. Temple defensive unit that needs some help. They need to turn it around here. They're down three scores as we take a look at Willis McGee. He's second touchdown of the afternoon. Yeah, at the point of attack, Haji Rizzoli and Carlos Joseph just walled down Temple's defensive front. And then there's a huge hole, as you said, cutting it north and south. Willis McGee, he goes in for the second time for Miami's offense. And you talk about the guys up front. Now, there's three of these guys, Carlos Joseph, Chris Myers, and Vernon Carey. This is only their third start for the Hurricanes. You know, Haji Rizzoli was sidelined last year with an injury, but Brett Romberg, the rock in the middle, does a great job coming from the great right north in Canada, coming down to sunny Florida and finding a home at center for the Canes. Canes last year with Gonzalez and McKinney and folks on the line like that, they gave up just four sacks, one of them to Temple last year. Busy man. That's Todd Seavers. And a high kick. And Fenton at about the one. 15, got one of 20, 25 out of every turn. For McConan Fenton, who averages just over 20 yards at return, a junior out of Somerville, New Jersey. But Joe Klecko, not on the coaching staff, but. Tell you, what, you know what was interesting about that? Hand motion and like just a few words. And I yeah. think the message was caught. <laughs> I think Joe's getting a little hot on the sidelines. Yeah. Want to get in there. No question. Al's going to put the ball in play at the 26 yard line. They have not had much offensive success. They had four plays in a punt the first time. Got to the 48 yard line their own the second time. This is their third possession. Again, gets it to Sharps, and Sharps is a guy they have to get the ball into his hands. Big day for college football all around the nation as we check out the Ameritrade out of town scores. California leading in a Pac 10 Big Ten matchup. Wisconsin, we saw them last week. Northern Illinois with an early lead. Three yard gain on that last carry by Gennardo Sharps out of Annapolis, Maryland. Second down and seven from the 29 yard line. Temple flooding the top of uh, your screen right here. Again, looks short side, and he's got a man to the 35 yard line. That's Sean Zarka. Well, Zarka with the catch gets the ball across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Yeah, maybe just shy of a first down and needed probably one more yard for the first down, bring up a third and one for Temple, but a good throw and catch. Zarka on the outside, good delivery and good timing by Mike Mc Mc McGann. He needs to make a first down here. McGann trying to Not forge ahead. Boy, I tell you what, there was no surge whatsoever. Good force by Maurice Sykes, the strong safety. Aiding and betting at D-line, Matt Walters and William Joseph in the middle. Looked like they tried to go without a, a snap count there and just got up real quick to the line of scrimmage, but you're not going to fool Miami. They got some big horses up front, and nobody blocks the corners. 99, it looked like Andrew Williams and McDougal, Jerome McDougal from the other side. Nobody touched them. They go right over the top. You see McDougal. He's airborne, and he's a, not a small guy. 6'4", 271, a senior, and, and the fans here in uh, Philadelphia don't like the decision on fourth and inches to go ahead and kick the ball away to Miami. Boy, they rushed that play like there was a uh, final Final seconds in the half and left them short. It didn't fool Temple and didn't fool Miami at all. Ringwelski hangs one high. Sands makes the catch. 25 yard line. 30, 35, and brought down at about the 37 yard line. Judy Stanley on the tackle along with Colin Hannigan. That's a 40 yard punt. 13 yards on the return. So a three and out for Temple. Miami gets the ball back. They're already up 21 0 here in Philly at Franklin Field. Yeah, taking a look down on the sidelines, the offensive coach is not happy with Temple's production. The timeout after that 40 yard punt will return to Philadelphia, where the number one team in America leads by 21.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Big East football coming to you from historic Franklin Field in Philadelphia, number one team of the country, Miami. And Dave Sims, John Kinjemi, and Greg Roberts with you as we check the storyline. Pretty basic. It's been all Miami, John. And a lot of Miami just to start the game. Willis McGahee off right side goes in for Miami score, making it 7 0. Then a horrible play. Temple special teams. Lawrence Wade gives it up. Miami pursues and they cash in. Kevin Beard on the slant. Great concentration over the middle. And then to culminate it after the celebration, McGahee off the left side. Terrific blocking behind that mammoth offensive line. They go in and push the score to 21 0. Short field, well, long field on two of them. Short field on the middle drive. This is the fourth possession, so three for three for the Canes. Yeah, and the drives didn't take a whole lot of time. Miami historically putting points on the board very quickly. First drive, a buck 40, 43 on the second one, and 334 on that third score. They run Gethers, and he's caught in the backfield. Nice play by Rodney Warmly. High energy guy, they really like him at Temple and need some big plays out of him. 6'4", 226, just a redshirt freshman from Oxon Hill, Maryland. Yeah, and, and besides Dan Klecko, Temple finally gets somebody from that defensive front in the offensive backfield of Miami. There you see Wormley, the freshman. They, they expect big things out of him. He's been injured a little bit, a young kid, but they love his energy off the side, as you said, Dave. Loss of two, second down and 12. Quick count by Dorsey. Looks left, throws left. Oh, good tackle. That's how you play the game from a DB standpoint. Yazid Jackson out of Sayreville, New Jersey. He left the calling card for Kevin Beard. He yazid them on the side. <laughs> it was a big pop. He actually turned right into it. Jackson, the junior, great cushion and great closing speed on that corner because those receivers are tough to tackle, tough to tackle in the open field. And Jackson did an awesome job on the outside. You see 15 tackles and one breakup on the season, but none bigger than that one right there. Six yard gain, third down and six as the wind kicks up here at Franklin Field. 42 yard line for Miami. Dorsey changing the play. And he falls down. They were bringing the blitz. He saw it. And he must have got caught by one of the linemen. Must have stumbled on the foot of one of the linemen. That's the type of break the Temple needs today. Tasso Apostolitis involved on that play. Looked like some feet get tangled up. It looked like right there the left guard, Chris Meyer, actually the right guard, Chris Meyer, goes back for pass protection and steps on Ken Dorsey's foot. Take a look right from your screen right there. Actually, it's 72. Ed Wilkins in the game at right guard that, that gets Dorsey, and that, that's a hopeless feeling for a quarterback. You know you're going down. You just hope that you can get back up after those big bodies untangle. Well, Temple calls a timeout. Wonder why they called a timeout. They only had 10 men on the field. Yeah, they might have had an injury coming off. It looked like Jackson may have done something to a lower leg and he was slow getting off the field. So if you're Temple right now, what's your mindset if you're Bobby Wallace and his coaching staff? You're down three scores. You finally got a three and out for Miami and making the punt for the first time. Well, you're tonight. begging your offense to do something offensively. You got to move the chains and you got to hope for a short field. Right now, Miami kicking into a little bit of a breeze. You got to hope for some time, something big to happen on a return where you can get immediate field position and shorten the field for your offense. It's one of the areas Bobby Wallace said, hey, we got to get something on with the kicking game when we visited with him yesterday. Going to get a look at Freddie Capstraw, who's been the leading punter in the Big East Conference the last two seasons. Senior from Rock Springs, Wyoming. He missed the Florida a and game, but came back last week against Florida. Six punts for 42 yards. All right, he bounces it back to him. Let's see if he gets it. Oh, he does it. He's fouled. Wow. What a development. There's the break that Temple needed. And it worked out well. McConan Finnett comes up with the loose ball. Question now is, can Temple get on the board with a touchdown? They got the break they needed. That's exactly what we were talking about, Dave. They got to shorten the field for this offense, and, and they do it right there on special teams. Looked like a low snap, a one hopper. Capshaw couldn't get his handle on it, and then he just dropped the football. We'll take a look at that play when we come back. Here it is right here, and he one-hopped it. Freddie, obviously not a shortstop back in his earlier days. 21-0 Miami. Being worked on, he made a terrific play last time he was on the field, but right now, a break for the offense for Temple. They get the ball first and 10 at the 22. 
But there's a serious offside free play. Sharps crossed the 15 to about the 12-yard line. Clearly, offsides on that one was Vince Wolfork, the sophomore from Boynton Beach, Florida. Offside, defense, penalty is declined. Second down. Throw it downstairs to Greg Roberts. Guys, you see Temple team Dr. Ray Moyer working the right knee right there of number five, Yazid Jackson. What they're saying is that knee is bruised. They're going to ice it, let him rest it. If he feels better, they may let him back in the ball game. Greg, thank you. Second down and one at the 12-yard line. McGant's got a spread formation to his right. Turn to give it to Sharps up the middle. Oh, good play inside. Good hustle inside there by Orion Harris, I believe it was. Good penetration. Make that Orion, Orion Harris it was. Yeah, good job by Orion Harris. He's coming into the game for San Antonio Thomas, who had an injury. He'll be out for the season, but a good job in the middle by the redshirt freshman. Good uh, pickup of the first down. 8-15 and counting. Sharps four carries, 15 yards. Third Temple first down on the afternoon. And they run McGinn as they fake the action going to the right. McGinn goes up left guard, gets inside the 10. Picked up about three. Yeah, picked up about three. I like my chances with Tenardo Sharps carrying the football in that situation and keep my 6'6", my 210-pound sophomore quarterback throwing the football and dealing it. Uh, you're in so close, you want to take advantage of your speed. And Temple hasn't been inside the 20 that many times. Nine possessions, two touchdowns, and a field goal. But right now, you got to go with your, your playmakers, and number four is definitely one of them. Hey, at Oregon State on the ropes inside the 20 quite often last week and came away with just three points on multiple, multiple opportunities. And Sharks stumbles. Stumbles under his own feet. D.J. Williams, number 17, he's one that got the pile backed up. D.J. Williams, early in this football season for Miami, has been playing spectacular football, tough football for Miami. A converted fullback, tailback when he came out of California. There he is right there doing a great job of stuffing the run, and Tenardo Sharps, Sharps nowhere to run the football on the short side. Temple looking to convert its first third down today, 0 for 3. Facing a big third down at eight. Down 21 nothing, under seven to play in the second quarter. You gotta throw it in the end zone here. I Dave. agree. McGinn, wow, they're running the draw. McGinn to the five, inside maybe to the three. He did not get the first down. He's gotta get to the one. He's about a yard short. John, tell me about that call. Well, you know what? It works out if, if it's a first down. You get him into a fourth and a short, but I like to take a shot and open it up, throw the football in the end zone. You're going to go for it on fourth down anyway, down 21-0. They're going to call a timeout and talk about it. They really are trying to work on that element of surprise of spreading and hoping to create natural gaps. Well, what they're trying to do is spread Miami out, count how many people they have left in the box. If they only have five people left in that five box circle, they're going to try to run the football, either with the quarterback or with Tenardo Sharps. Very interesting call. 6.05 to go second quarter. Make sure you join us next Saturday, noon Eastern time. We'll see the Rutgers Scarlet Knights for the first time this season. We'll catch them in beautiful Heinz Field in Pittsburgh and take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. That's Rutgers of Pittsburgh, Saturday, September 21st, noon Eastern time is your start. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Well, we haven't seen a lot of wide stuff from Temple. Tremendous speed from all 11 on that Miami club. In terms of throwing it in the end zone here, just outside, just inside the three-yard line with wide side of the field to the right. If you're quarter, if you're calling this game, if you're doing a Johnny, you making your own calls. What do you call it? Well, you definitely want to. You might want to put trips out to the right side of the field and spread Miami out. Work the short side of the field with one wide receiver and Tenardo Sharps, and maybe get a mismatch to the short side. Give the illusion you're going to go wide and try to get fit the football into your back or your or your split end on a slant. 6.22 to go. And here come the Owls. McGann rushing the ball. Four for 15. And they're going to go trips to the right side. Four carries, 15 yards. Buster Trammer is in the slot with Fenton. Outside him, Stubbs. In the backfield is Sharks. Man to man, Dave. And Zamir Cobb is split to McGann's left. 
Man to man. Option inside. Yeah. No, sir. Well, the first down. He did first get the first down, but no touchdown. It was awfully close. The head linesman. Troy Gray said he did not get in the end zone. And on top of that, complicating matters, Fenton is injured. He took a major hit. Page and Roy, Ray Moyer, training crew here at Tepe University, out to attend. Here's Bobby Wallace as well. Boy, he, what a lick. Oh, Sean took. Taylor came with a full head of steam from that free safety spot and just huge hit on Fenton. 6.17 to go. We'll take a timeout. And when we come back, we'll see how Mr. Fenton is doing. He made a good effort, but boy, did he get high load there. Temple knocking on the door, trailing by three scores. Well, the Temple Owls are inches away from getting into the end zone as we watch McConan Fenton. He got high load on this last play, trying to get in the end zone. Watch this. Just full speed. There you see high by Sean Taylor and low by Maurice Sykes. And you're going to see it full speed here. And it doesn't happen yeah. that, that slowly. Bang, bang. And it looks like the football might have crossed the goal line. It's questionable. It's tough to see from that back angle, but it looked like it may have scored. A lot of times in the pros, you'll see guys extend that ball to get it in. McConan had it in tight, and evidently right. that's why the head linesman didn't give it to him. I thought he got in. That's a big loss if Fenton can't go. Here come the Owls. Donnie Coleman, junior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, number six. He replaces Fenton first and goal for Temple inside the one-yard line. On count by McGann, spinning into the end zone. Touchdown is Tenardo Schultz. Nice spin move that time by Tenardo Sharps. It looked like Andrew Williams had him wrapped up in the backfield, but he went for the knockout blow, didn't wrap up. Tenardo Sharps, the senior out of Annapolis, Maryland, going in. That's his first rushing touchdown on the season. And Temple sends in Cap Pop Columbo for the point after. Kick is up. And it's good. So Capstra had a one-hop bad snap on a punt. It set up, lost 18 yards, and set Temple up for this drive, John. Well, Miami had everybody in the right position, but they just didn't wrap up. And give the credit to Tenardo Sharps, bouncing off the would-be tackler, number 99, Andrew Williams, just an arm tackle on the right side of your screen. Vilma can't get there, and Tenardo Sharps takes it in, and Temple's on the board. There you see his rushing touchdowns from 99. He hits one touchdown, but in 2000, a breakout year, 10 touchdowns. But he has three in the last 16 games, and you got to get more production out of that running back. He's a talented running back. You got to find a way to get him in the open field and in the end zone. Seven plays to go 21 yards, 3.03 off the clock. Well, Larry Coker and company giving up a touchdown here in Philly. It's a series that has been dominated by the Hurricanes over the years. Could we run, uh, truly run? Uh, All right, you're Miami now. You've got 553 to go, John. What are you looking for here? After, well, we'll talk about this after a second. Let's get this kick first. And Gellers, about a yard deep. Oh, good coverage. Only to the 15-yard line, and that kick was covered by Mark Miller, a backup linebacker, number 32, really got a good lick. He really did. A lot of speed shown that time by Temple on special teams, and Bobby Wallace talked about it. He wants his team to compete today. He might not have the ability of Miami, but he wants them to go out and let it all hang out. Let it go out. If you're going to go down, you're going to go down swinging. You want, want him to be more competitive with his defense. Now they've got an opportunity with 542 left to go before halftime to try to make Miami go three and out. There we go, first and 10, 15-yard line. I'll keep it on the ground. And how about the swarming Temple defense? Jairo Almonte, number one, led the way. J.D. Nichols got a piece, number 33. 
Also had some help from Tasso Pastelitis, number 93. Yeah, three or four guys there on Temple yeah, with one. maroon jerseys. You see right there, good job. They, Miami never gets the corner. Great job on the on the outside. And you see the pursuit from Temple's defense. Big play here on second down. Miami can probably go up top. Look for the tight end combination. One yard gain, second and nine. Delay and look at the room here for Gathers. 20 yard line and a good stick by Temple. Temple's got it. The stick by Almonte made it happen. Leftwich with the recovery from the Temple Owls. And Temple's got the crowd in it, Dave. Great job. A great stick from the defensive secondary. Terrence Leftwich there. You see him celebrating on the sidelines. This crowd getting into the football game. That's the turnover they needed. Now Temple with great field position at the Miami 16 yard line. But what a hit on the outside. Gathers with the football. Looked like he had a big Ooh. game, but a huge hit by Montre. The outback number one. Just a huge hit on the outside. Gathers had a lot of running room to the short side of the field, but a, a big time hit by the outback. And then Leftwich, 24, coming up with the recovery. A big time hit right there, bang, from the middle of the secondary. So let's see if Temple can convert it. Sharps, the lone setback. First and 10 from the Miami 16. Sharps. Looking for You talked about getting back in this football game. The crowd's in it, and Temple's in it as well with 4.55 left to go. Temple, 13 points unanswered. Sharps having a terrific day at seven carries, 32 yards, two touchdowns. Last two times he's touched it, he scored. Here's Pac Limba for the point after. Good snap, it's put down, and booted through. A developing story in Philadelphia with 4.55 to go second quarter. Number one team in America being challenged 21-14 by the Temple Owls. The Owls were down three scores and they've come back. And that was all Tenardo Sharps. There wasn't much running room, Dave, on the inside. One play for 16 yards. And that's his second time he gets into the end zone. Look at him bounce off of would-be tacklers. A lot of arm tackles by Miami, but a great job of vision. Tenardo Sharps keeps the legs pumping, and he finds a way to get into the end zone. There was a lot of traffic. You see Sykes trying to get the tackle down. Nobody can bring down number four. He goes in twice to push the score to 21-14. to Fumble cashed in. Let's go down to Greg Roberts. Talk about getting into a rhythm. Tenardo Sharps punches it in. This guy's all about rhythm. You know, he plays the drums. He began playing the drums back when he was 10, and he plays at Christ is the Answer Full Gospel Church in his hometown of Annapolis, Maryland. He's also an active member and a youth group leader. I tell you what, that guy knows how to work the sticks, and he knows how to work those legs. No question about it, Greg. Thank you very much. A year ago, Temple tried to slow the game down and did down in Miami at the Orange Bowl. Trail only 14 nothing. Bobby Wallace didn't take a shot with the ball and the win in the final two minutes. They wound up giving up a couple of big scores, but boy, this is really interesting here. Kickoff coming together is about three yards deep. There. He's going to bring it out. How about this? Good coverage by Temple at the 12 yard line. Jarrett Payton tried to tell him to keep it there. He didn't. And now Miami with a fired up Temple ball club going to put it in play at only the 12-yard line. Well, Jared Payton's got to go and tackle his teammate Jason Gethers and not let him out of the end zone. There's a lot of lines drawn on this field at, in, in this stadium. It's tough to tell where you're at. Jason Gathers was a good five yards back in that end zone. Now, Ken Dorsey and crew has to come out. The crowd's back in it. They have to quiet this crowd down. None better to do but give it to Willis McGahee and let him slow this thing down. Fall Park holds about 60,000, about 25,000 on hand. Uh-oh, here's McGahee on the outside. Nice tackle by Jamal Wallace. Gain up to the 18-yard line, picks up six. Willis McGahee back in the football game. They have Jason, Jason Gathers, who coughed it up last series. Willis McGahee back in, and that's why he averaged close to eight yards per carry, actually close to nine yards per carry. He'll gash you, given the chance. Quad train Hill, the fullback in this side formation. McGee, he taught carry 73 yards. Dorsey got a man running free. Three over long shoulder. He had Beard running down the 
by numbers on the inside. The ball is thrown to the outside. He was clearly there. He had smoked the cornerback left which. Yeah, just a pump and go by Ken Dorsey on the outside. He had his man, Kevin Beard, but a bad ball to the outside. Bring up third and four. And I've been begging for the tight end to get back into this football game to get Ken Dorsey back in some rhythm. It was a good call on the outside. Rob Jaczynski had the matchup he wanted one on one, but a lot of pressure around the legs. Rob, it looked like Tyrone Gitzel, 98, giving some pressure to Ken Dorsey. Four for six on third down. Peyton, check that Winslow, tight end left side. He is running the seam. Dorsey not looking for him. Over the middle. Beard, Beard was there. Penalty flag on the play. Peyton, I keep calling him Peyton, beg your pardon. Winslow was running free on the far side. Holding against Miami, Dave. They'll decline that. Bring on the punt unit. Trying to go down the field, fitting it into Kevin Holding. Beard. On the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. See if we can pick up the hole. There's the uh, takedown oh, right there. Haji Mazzoli. <laughs> Chirko gets a big shirt full of one of the Temple defensive tackles and brings them down. Zamir Cobb is deep to receive. The Freddie Capstraw punt. Who would have thought 402 to go? Temple Dallas score to the number one team. High snap. One up to get it. Pretty good punt. Cobb at the 37. No wall there. He gives up some yards. Loses the ball. Luckily for him, it goes out of bounds. So that return, he lost some yards, and there's another penalty. Could be a face mask down here on the coverage team. I got actually it's back up at midfield. Yeah. 44 yards on the punt. It looked like 26 Sean Taylor and someone from the Temple special teams. It looked like Donnie Coleman were getting into it around the 50 yard line. Let's see which way this goes. This could be huge for Temple to give him instant field position. Wow. Ah, both pups. All right, so they negate. Ball, offsetting personal foul against white, offsetting personal foul against red. End of the run, first down. So Temple's going to put it in play at the 37 yard line. Opening part of this story has been all Miami. First three times they get the ball, they score, but now the Temple outs off of two runs by Sharp. They had a bad punt. That's snap on a punt for Miami. Sharps converted that on a one yard run. And then Sharps on a 16 yard run after a fumble by Gathers. There's Temple now. And they'll run it with Sharps. Find some room. Nice cutback up to the 40. Four yard line. So we mentioned Miami out of the gate quickly, converting on Temple mistakes, John. Yeah, if you're wondering why it's so loud, it's Tenardo Sharps that's bringing this crowd back. A one yard run, a tough run, and then he comes back and goes up the middle, untouched, 16 yards for Temple to bring him within a touchdown. And right now, you can feel the momentum. This offensive line of Temple starting to push back the white jerseys from Miami. And Dorsey, 11 of 18 for 165 yards and a touchdown. McGahee, already a big afternoon, 73 yards with two touchdowns. Touchdowns and 30 receiving yards, but Tarnardo Sharps turning it around for Temple. Quarterback draw again. Got the first down right to midfield where he's banged down there by Antrol Roll. And that was a good look at our more highlight full facts of the game. First down, Temple ball in midfield. David Brock doing a nice job of mixing it up, using Tarnardo Sharps and actually using his big quarterback, Mike McGann, to run the football more than I thought they would. Yeah. Six rushes for 21 yards. I didn't expect that either. Absolutely not. Sharps, eight carries for 40 yards. So you can imagine how Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator for uh, Miami, must feel. Spread formation to the right. Blitz off the corner. They try to run underneath on a little the old Utah shovel pass, and Roll was not buying it. He's seen that play. Well, you got to get out of that play if you're Mike McGann. It was pure man coverage. You cannot account for Antrell Roll coming from the inside. The free safety was on top of Antrell Roll, which means he's going to come on the blitz. You got to be able to see that. If you're only a sophomore, it's no excuse. You got to get out of a bad play, maybe run away from the pressure. Lost two on that play. They bring in uh, Christian, Krishnan Lewis, number 14. And a wide out at the very top of your screen. 
Long cap on McGann. Turn and run it up the middle. Sharps keeps his feet. A good play by Rome prevented further damage. About a four-yard pickup. Yeah, we talked with Miami defensive coordinator Randy Shannon about last week's game. They really didn't blitz a whole lot there in back-to-back -back plays. And you can see a little confusion with Jonathan Vilma's helmet hooking up with somebody in the middle. A lot of hitting going on now in a tight football game with 147. But on two consecutive plays, Miami's come with corner blitzes, trying to make Temple cough up the football and make a mistake. You're just joining us, Temple has made this a ball game after being down by three scores with Franklin Field on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania here in Philly. Dave Sims, John Kajemi, and Craig Roberts with you. Clock at 139 and counting. They're letting it run down. And since Miami, since that botched punt, it's turned it over, Miami. Temple's done a heck of a job. Again, six for six, 22 yards passing. He's going to throw here, and it got knocked out. Fantastic job by Matt Walters, the senior from Melbourne, Florida, number 91. He was involved in that wacky play at BC last year. And Edward Reed took the fumble away from, fumble recovery away from Walters, went in and iced the game from about 80 yards. He stole it from Matt Walters. Sure there you see the season, six tackles, three and a half for a loss. Haven't mentioned him too much today. He also has two sacks for minus 11 yards, but he's a big force on the inside. Here's Ringwelski for a punt. His last punt, he's averaging 44 3. Sands at the nine. If he can get to it, he's got some room. Got a blocker. Uh, another blocker. He's in the middle. He got the wall. To the edge. Catch it back. He cut it back inside. If he goes wide, he's gone. What a good return back to Temple territory to the 47 yard line. 39 on the punt, 46 on the return. Yeah, nice job by Miami special teams. They had the wall set up and a great job eluding the first wave. That's what you have to do. All good returns. If you can make the first man miss, you can get happening. And you can see, as you said, if Ethnic just bounces it outside right there, he could go the distance. Only the kicker was in his way. And a good block inside there. Ethnic Sands did. He had some help from a backup linebacker. And he cut it inside, but nonetheless, Miami in good shape. At the Temple 47, Dorsey going up top. He's got his tight end down the middle. And down for Beard and traps it. Beard covered by his opposite number there for the Temple Owls, and that's Jamal Wallace. Let's go downstairs and Greg Roberts. Hey, guys, just a reminder, be sure to hang around for our Discover Card halftime report. We'll check in with what's going on around the Big East with our Big East Wire. Also, scores from the top 25 and also the Big East. And we'll have first-half highlights, stats, and analysis. All that's coming up on the Discover Card halftime report. Greg, thank you. Kevin Bearded, Jr., Kellen Winslow, just the sophomore. It's interesting how Dorsey's going more to the upperclassmen. McGay, first down Miami, 35-yard line. Nice piece of change there, goes for 12. Yeah, bring in the hammer and just thump you over the head with it. Willis McGahey just gashing Temple off the left side. A big run for 11 yards. Bring up first and 10, 50 seconds left to go before halftime. Hey, come on, Dave. Dorsey out of the gun. That time, poor, poorly thrown. I don't think that was tipped at all. That was just poorly thrown. Trying to get ethnic Sands on a, on a deep curl. Yeah, he let his tight end, Kellen Winslow, clear, and he tried to get the dig in to, to Ethnic Sands. Just a bad ball, as you said, Dave, down in the AstroTurf. No chance for a completion there, bringing up second and ten. What happens in a play like that? I mean, here's a guy, obviously, he's a terrific player. What happened in How about mechanics? See nah, anything? Sometimes you just squeeze it too hard. You want to fit it in there and throw a bullet, and sometimes it just doesn't come out properly. Rest assured, he's looking to make up for it here. Second down at ten. 36-yard line. Dorsey's got time, throws short, and he's got Parrish, does a super shot to hold on. Boy, it's amazing to be able to stop like that. Picked up about five, and Miami with the clock running at 30 seconds. Surprised they're not going for a timeout. And there it is. So balls at the 30-yard line will leave them third down and four. 
John, I, I like your point about not going to Winslow. He picked up a 26 yarder to set up the first score way back when in the first period, and they have not looked for him at all. Well, he, he ate him up in the first quarter just by going across the field, using his speed and his size to get the football out on the perimeter. Then he turns it upfield, and they really haven't looked his way. They've been trying to push the ball down the field to the whiteouts on the ends, the, the hitch and go on the outside. And I just think the combination between Willis McGahee with some play action to the tight end, you're running it so well with McGahee at the tailback. You got to go back to your tight end. You only have two catches for 40 yards. He's averaging 20, 20 a catch. So I want to try to get him the football the easiest way possible. Here's another thing to consider too. Winslow at 6'5", going against DBs, the starting DBs for Temple at 5'10", 6'2", six six and 6'. Yeah, and, and the speed of the tight end, he, he, it's very deceiving. A big guy like that can outrun you. 27 seconds to go. Willis McGahee, sophomore out of Miami. Senior Ken Dorsey, Maxwell Award winner, the Maxwell Award. Home right here in Philadelphia. And this is when he shines too, uh, Dave. When he gets in, down inside, when you have to get a score, you have to make some, some plays. This is where Ken Dorsey usually comes up and puts it in the end zone. Well, he's one for his last six. He may not know the exact number, but he knows he's not on a roll. Let's see if he can pick it up here. 27 seconds to go. Miami third down and four at the Temple 30. The Canes up 21-14. Temple has stormed back to make a game here in the second quarter. Throwing and it gets Beard. And Beard looks like he's got the first down to the 25-yard line covered by Almonte. What well, great effort by Kevin Beard. He's made one spectacular catch for a touchdown. That one. All-out effort, giving up the body to go get the football. Ken Dorsey just leads him across the field, but great concentration and a nice catch to keep this drive alive. Kevin Beard, Kevin Beard came in with no catches. That's a super job right there, his fourth of the afternoon. Dorsey again to throw. That time, comeback, Sands, did he catch it? Ooh, boy, I tell you what, if this is the NFL, that gets challenged. That ball is down to the 14-yard line, and that's good for another first down. Well, two back-to-back -back terrific catches, one by Ethnic Sands and one by Kevin Beard. Larry Coker will take his time out, and as you said, it might have skipped in there, but an awesome job of going down to get the football. You got 11 seconds, Miami up by 12. Looks like the ball inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. You want to take a shot. This situation last week, they tried to isolate Kellen Winslow on the outside and throw him a fade route. They had everybody spread out, and they went to the tight end. I'd be surprised, again, if they spread everybody out and try to put the ball in the end zone here. First catch for Ethnic Sands today. 11 yards for the former quarterback. Out of Carroll City High School in Maryland, there's a timeout story. Yeah, and Bobby Wallace urging his defense on on the sidelines. This is it right here. You got to keep him out of the end zone, try to hold him to a field goal chance. They've already missed one, so you want to try to keep him out of the end zone here with only 11 seconds before halftime. Can you imagine the shock waves around the country for your 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock starts? And this score is right over the loudspeaker and seen on TV. There's a lot of cheering going on in Oklahoma and Texas and places like that, that's for sure. A lot of people are probably picking themselves up. Now, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? And they ran over Florida last week. Yeah, that could have been worse. There we go. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. This drive, after a terrific 49-yard return, started at the 47-yard line of Temple. Dorsey got time. Oh, dang. Throw in zone. No, sir. Off the hands of Ethnic Sands. He had the tight end in the far corner. He had Beard and McGahee in the backfield and down near the end zone. That might have been the toughest throw he had on that play with a heck of a lot of time. And he had a lot of time. He went to one receiver, went to the other receiver. And you got to make this catch if you're a quarterback. You try to give him the best opportunity to, to fit the football in there, and that's a diving catch. It would have been a tough one, but it's not one that he hasn't made before. I think Sands going down to the carpet, extending himself, doesn't come up with the big play, but there's a heck of an effort by a quarterback and receiver. Severs is missed from 35. This is a 31-yard attempt. Our free Jack Kramer blows the whistle. 31-yard attempt out of a hole from Capstraw. A timeout is called. So 
Larry Coker and company trying to tackle on three more before we go to halftime. Ken Dorsey talking with the referee with the officials trying to see who actually called that timeout. if he if the ball was stopped by Temple or it was by Miami it looks like the uh, kicking team from Miami will continue to stay on the football field. So Miami scored on three of its first four possessions to take a 21 nothing lead. Temple comes back bad snap to Freddie Capstraw. 18 yards on the loss. Temple's got a short field to go. Sharper converts it, makes it 21 7. Almonte forces a fumble, recovered by Leftwich. Short field again. 16 yard line of Miami. Sharps takes it in 21 14. That's where we are right now with five seconds to go. <clears throat> 31 yard attempt for Severs, who's two out of four on the season. And boy, he put a lot of foot into that one, and it's good. <laughs> so that's the final play of the first half of the Temple Out fans. Have something to cheer about. More than a five touchdown underdog. Temple Owls trailing 24 14. Greg Roberts coming up Ladies with our halftime here from Franklin Field Welcome in Philadelphia. Get, glad you could join us for Big East football. Pretty good game so far. Mike McGann and the Owls hanging tough, trailing by 10. We are ready for second half action here in Philadelphia at Franklin Field. Miami, the number one team of the country, the defending national champions, kicking it off here to get us going in the second half. And here we go. And a real good kick. Nine yards deep. Smart move to keep it right there. Bernardo Sharks has been the scoring star and the rushing star for the Temple Owls. Yeah, he's done a nice job of taking advantage of the turnovers offensively and getting it into the end zone. He also did a good job catching the football out of the backfield. Gets a personal foul penalty right there with Jonathan Vilma. But the one-yard run, he breaks a tackle about three yards deep in the end zone. And then he goes 16 yards, breaks two arm tackles, and gets into the end zone to make this a 24-14 game. And Tenardo very happy about that. Jack, give me a when we get through the next play I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on what you think both coaches might have might have said at halftime here's McGann a handoff comeback is there close down quickly follow loose ball it's like he's got it. it he does Vilma there was a Temple player that overran the ball and how about that first play from scrimmage Sharps gives it up And that's exactly what Bobby Wallace didn't say at halftime. They wanted to come out and, and really take advantage of being back in this football game. And I think Miami on the other side lost interest. But now Jonathan Vilma gets him right back into getting some great field position. It looks like Tornado makes a great cut here. Goes back and untouched right there from behind. He gets stripped. A nice play from behind. Couldn't get a number on that. It looked like uh, 51. Vilma does recover the fumble. But someone from behind put a hand on it. One of the Temple Owls had a chance. And that's almost picked off. They try to go to Beard, and do you detect a heavy reliance on Beard today? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And Ken Dorsey does not look settled back in the backfield. Temple doing a good job of harassing him. But there's the tackle from behind. Jamal Green, number 55, does an excellent job of getting behind Tenardo Sharps and stripping the football. And then Vilma comes in for the recovery. Tight end Dan Bosnick, number 13, had a terrific shot at it and, and overran the ball. Jonathan Vilma, if you watch the Rose Bowl against Nebraska, the BCS championship game, two, a lot of things jump out at you. But to me right now, two spectacular tackles by Jonathan Vilma. We spoke to him about why he's the best linebacker in the Big East. I'm the best linebacker in the conference because I'm just as smart as I am aggressive. So when you think you have me, you think you're getting in my head, it's, it's not working. I'm, I'm a step ahead of you. Among other reasons. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he had two of the greatest tackles I've ever seen. They run McGahee trying to get to the edge. Electric swift 
to the edge, first down, Miami. Nice thinking run by Willis McGahee. Leftwich had a chance to make a play for it. No gain and possibly a loss and gives up a big run of 16 yards. Terrence needs to get to the outside and, and be the last man for pursuit on that side. He really went for the gamble, went for the big tackle, and he came up empty. You see the speed of Willis McGahee. Doesn't look like he's got a big motor, but he's got a huge motor, and then he's going to make you pay at the end of the tackle. 14 carries, 101 for McGahee. He was huge last week against Florida. Going for 204 yards on 24 carries. Gets the call again, keeps his head up and plows ahead across the 10 down to about the eight yard line. Number two, Willis McGahee. Good looking run eight. again. Looks up, let's call it five on that play. Well, it's incredible. He came into this game averaging 8.8 .8 yards a carry. And he's proven why he can do that. He can make you miss. He can run inside the tackles. He can run tough yards and you know, get tough yards when he needs to. And he also has the speed to get the perimeter. That's what you like about Willis McGee. He's the full package. Double tight ends for Miami on the right side. Ethnic Sands to Dorsey's left. That's Winston in motion. Look at that hole. Nice play by McGee. He gets stumbled. Stumbled and falls down at about the one yard line. First and goal, Miami. Willis would like to have that one back. As you said, a huge hole. This offensive line coming out, taking advantage of the turnover. Great blocking up front by 76. Carlos Joseph and Chris Myers to the right side, the right guard. And Willis saw daylight. He just lost his footing there about the two yard line. It'll be first and goal at the one. Wonder who's going to get the ball here. McGahee, 16 carries, a buck 12, two touchdowns already. The game cuts it up in the traffic. Touchdown, Miami. And the From the game. Game. That's his third running touchdown of the afternoon. And you can't pin that on Temple's defense. They gave up great field position, and Willis McGahee made him pay. What you like about Willis McGahee, he can stop and start and get that up to almost full speed immediately. He's done it two or three times today, and that one causes, causes Temple six points. So Sharps fumbles on the first play from scrimmage here in the second half. It's converted by the Miami Hurricanes. I think Temple may have too many bodies on the field. Legal substitution against the defense. 12 men on the field, half the distance to the goal line. Those are the kind of sloppy plays that are coach killers. Absolutely. The Seavers has been a busy young man this afternoon. One out of two. Field goal wise. This one. Bang through and good. So Miami, they will make you pay. You open the door, they're going to get through it. Point after is good. Timeout with 13.24 to go, third period. It's 31 14. The Hurricanes of Miami. It's Willis McGahee. Boy, is he making a name for himself. Remember that name and number. Temple allows that defensive unit has seen more than it wants to of Willis McGahee. They had one incomplete pass on that last Miami scoring drive. The other plays were four runs and McGahee took it in to build this 31 to 14 lead. Well, as you said, remember this name and remember this number because he's not finished in this afternoon. He goes in from one yard out to start the scoring. Then he follows in that big offensive line. But the thing about Willis McGee, watch him stop, start again, get into the end zone. He never loses his patience, never loses his balance, and never loses his speed. And you see the first nine games, 374 yards rushing and three TDs in his career. The last two games, he only went for 313 and four touchdowns. So, I mean, this kid can make it happen. A couple years ago when they had James Jackson, I think it was two years ago, the coaches convened and they said, who's our best back? It was Willis McGahee. They had, they had so much talent. He was redshirting that year. He was hurt. Yeah. Amazing. He makes that 90 degree cut as well as anybody I've ever seen. Kicked out to the five yard line. This is Wade. He fumbled on one kickoff earlier. Brings it back to the 22 yard line. Lawrence Wade tackling a play by Jarrell Weaver. We haven't seen many deep tries here from Temple offensively. What might you expect from uh, David Brock, their offensive coordinator, who came down from 
Hofstra University. Well, I think you, you've seen it. I don't think they're going to get out of this package and try to throw the football downfield. They're going to spread you out. They're going to try to get the ball out of the pocket, not let Mike hold on to the football for too long. I don't think they're going to gamble just yet. They're going to try to stay in the base offense they started this game with. Well, there's the spread, empty backfield for Mike McGann. And there's the draw off the spread. Nice yard. Oh, baby, there's a tackle. Here is a target they paid for it. Sean Taylor, that's the second time he has had a big league hit. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing you don't want to do when you're 6'6 six, six and 210. You don't want to put a big bullseye on your chest because that's exactly what happened. And Sean Taylor made Mike McGann pay. Watch right here. He's going to shift and, and shift and try to make a move. It's best just to go down, take the six, seven, eight yard gain, and live to play another day. Whoa. Those licks add up. Again, eight rushes for 29 yards. Second down and one at the 32 of Temple. Quick release by Tick. Oh boy, had an opportunity. That was Cornelius Green, the 6'4 senior out of Houston, Texas. He knocked it down and he was hoping for it to go straight up in the air. He might have had a pick. Yeah, Cornelius Green doing a nice job of trying to get into the backfield. They also come with Antrell Rule off the left edge. You see, that's what makes Mike McGann a little antsy, try to get rid of the football. They've done that late in the second quarter. They're coming back Miami defensively, bringing people off the edge to try to confuse the blocking scheme of Temple up front. So the Owls looking to convert their first, first, a uh, third down. Here on the afternoon, third down and one at their own 32, one yard. Oh boy, I don't know. Sharks, it's going to be real close. And it is good for a first down. That forward lean was very helpful. Andrew Roll, number six, got it. Cornerback. Let's check in with Greg Roberts. Get an update on the Owls. Tenardo Sharps is going to have to carry the mail here for Temple because his backup, McKinnon Fenton, he's out of this ball game. Doctors say they think it's strained ligaments in the left ankle. He will not return. You can see he doesn't even have his pads on. Not a good sign. Thanks, Greg. First and 10, 34-yard line. Three minutes in, third quarter. Sharps with the final little room. And he's brought down by Jamal Green, number 55, who's from nearby Camden, New Jersey. Went to Woodrow Wilson High School. This is exactly what Temple wanted to do prior to putting it on the ground on the first play of the third quarter. They wanted to come out, establish the run a little bit, take some balance, and get some rhythm to this offense because they're not getting any rhythm going down the field. They have to do controlled passing game, and they have to use it by using number four, Tonardo Sharps, in that passing game. Sharps, 12 carries, 52 yards, second down and six, all at the 38-yard line. Temple fumbled its first play from scrimmage. Here to start the second, the second half, turn Stubbs with that catch. They'll give him progress, picks up three. Bring up a third down and short. Pretty soon, Dave, they're going to have to either hit a hitch and go or a slant and go to try to get Miami off the defensive line because they're crowding the line of scrimmage right now. As well they should. Third and one, and what was that? Took a knee? Well, it was offsides against Miami. I think okay. the center got contact and just snapped the football up. All right. Nice job by Donnie Klein, the senior from Manasquan, New Jersey. Offside, defense, contact foul, five-yard penalty, first down. And Matt Walters, the guilty party. Miami today, six penalties for 56 yards last week. A bunch of penalties, 14 penalties against Florida. And that was a game they absolutely positively dominated from minute one. Dave, if you're Temple, you got to take your shot right here. Miami's going to come with, with full pressure right here. You got to take your shot on a fade route somewhere at the top of the field. Ball's at the 48 yard line of the Owls. They got trips receivers to the left. They run up the middle, and Miami's seen that play. Sharps does gain a couple as he gets to the 49 yard line of Miami. Yeah, I know. I, this is the same feeling I had last year, first half. At Miami. Down Miami, where I kept waiting. They got to take a shot at some point, and they never did. Well, they're, they're moving Antrell Roll into a position where he's going to really be antagonistic to Mike McGann in this offense. They're bringing him up to the line of scrimmage, and they're sending him because they're playing man behind him. Sure. Roll is a cornerback. And tell you what, he's had free reign on the edge. They rush four, throw it underneath. Nice catch, but not much of a game there by Terrence Stubbs. We're throwing a lot of short passes. 
and for nothing. You know, it, it's it's better off to run that football. Those are dangerous passes with a lot of white shirts in That's the right. middle of that of that you know defensive backfield and linebacker position. So if you're Mike McGann in this Temple offense, you've got to try to push the football at some point down the field. McGann's got a good percentage, eight of ten, but for 28 yards. Maybe this is the shot here. Third down and five at the Miami 47. Or it's the draw play again, Dave. 31-14, Canes, blitz, roll, tipping off the hands. A little bit too rich there for Donnie Coleman. Coverage on the play for Miami. Kelly Jennings did a good job. The redshirt freshman from Suwannee High School in Live Oak, Florida. It's a tough position for the Temple offense because up front they probably figure that we don't want to put pressure on our quarterback. We can't hold it for that long. But at some time, you're going to have to get out because Antrell rolls in a position where he's going to hit Mike McGann on every play. You might as well take a shot. Oh, it's partially blocked. Ball goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line. It was blocked by DeLone Wilborn. Thank you, pardon, Maurice Sykes. Sykes with the block. That's a heck of a play. And look at Miami. Look at this field position. Short field position one more time. And that gets the Miami sideline back into this thing. Get them excited. Larry Coker telling everybody what a great job they've done, especially on special teams. Timeout on the field. Block made right here. And Miami's in business. They lead 31-14. We'll be back to Franklin Field right after this. Maurice Sykes, the junior from Miami, and right now, Kane's in good shape as we take a look at our Dodge Tough Player of the Week, and it's Mr. Sykes. How about him last week against Florida, Jeff? He was unbelievable. Two interceptions last week. One was returned 97 yards, really the, the game breaker in the football game. Miami had control, but Florida trying to creep back in, and Maurice Sykes said, no, not, not right now. I'm going to take over the swamp and go 97 on you. That was a big play of the game. Sure was. Fourth longest return in the history of the Big East Conference. So after that miscue by the Owls, they've had a more than their share. First and 10 Canes, play action Dorsey. Throws it outside, the fullback hand in his hands, Quatrine Hill, Richard freshman from Sunrise, Florida. A couple of things that, are, that get more curious as we go along, John. Miami not going after Winslow. Winslow getting more opportunities. And then um, a Temple not taking a deep shot at all. Yeah, Temple's really surprising. They don't take a shot offensively, and that'll just make Miami in a better position to move this football after having great field position on Temple's 47-yard line. They will push the football down the field. Winslow two ca catches for 40 yards. Flanker screen, Beard, eludes one, eludes two, three. Takes a game to bring him down as he pushes very close to a first down. About a yard short. That was a nice game. Let's call it a game of nine. Yeah, simple hit screen out to the right side and great effort on the outside by number nine, Kevin Beard. He's had a terrific catch for a touchdown today, a 16-yarder over the middle. That time he shows you what he, he could do with his toughness, bringing a couple temple tackles on the perimeter and getting close to a first down. Eric Winston. Tight end along with Kellen Winslow on the right side for Ken Dorsey. That man again, McGee, and he catch him for a loss. Tackle for a loss. That was Ryan, like Ryan Wallace, Wallace yeah. yeah, out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Athletic Conference Player of the Year. They finally get McGahee going sideways and they can catch him from behind. He shoots the gap, does Ryan Wallace, from the side. And also a great job. It looked like Klecko from the backside getting in on that tackle as well. So that third down and one. Temple forces a three and out. A lot of time. Nice job by Capstra. And a fair catch is made down at the 12-yard line. That was left in Thompson. Timeout on the field. 7.56 to go from Franklin Field. Third quarter, 31-14 Miami. Back to Franklin Field. One of the big things Bobby Wallace wants to do is for this program and this team to remain positive. What he did on Thursday night, he strung together 61 plays from the last two meetings with Temple in Miami, put together a highlight reel of Temple doing things well against Miami. Said he did it more for the young kids. He just didn't want his team to be overwhelmed. He said you have to believe you can win before you can win. 
Craig, thank you very much. I would add, maybe, as Air Sharps gets taken down by Jerome McDougal, that maybe, you know, it's interesting, the coaching philosophy, I thought oh, that was some good thinking. Here's what Bobby's done. You see the progression up to four wins, which has been impressive. But there, I, I am still flabbergasted. Even against the bully, you got to throw a haymaker. They have not. You got to hit him in the chin a couple Absolutely. times. You know, you got to hit him in the jaw and let him know you're going to come after him like they wanted to do offensively. And I think they've done a decent job, but they haven't put enough pressure on Miami. If you can do that, at least you've got to try to accomplish that. Second down and 13. Approaching seven minutes to go here in the third quarter at historic Franklin Field. Out pattern sharps. Taken out by Kelly Jenkins. And ball to the 11 yard line to get a one. The speed, that's the thing. This offense, if you have superior speed, is going to break those extended handoffs. But against Miami, everybody has just ridiculous speed. Yeah, and, and really against Miami, there's a bigger risk factor trying to throw the football, uh, you know, out to the flats for one or two yards than it is running or, or doing something up the field. Sure. Sure. It's almost like they have too much respect for them. <laughs> that's right. 31-14, Canes, third and long for the Owls. There's a deep middle and miscue there as they try to get it to Stubbs. At least they, they went down the field in an yep. attempt to get the first down there. They just didn't throw the, the three-yard hitch or, or something like that, but you got to go after that ball. That was a, a nice throw, good patience in the pocket by McGann. He just didn't come up with the, you know, the pitch and catch. It wasn't a bad throw at all. Ringwelski from his own end zone. That Miami's going to come after this one. Four punts, one blocked, and he gets it off. Not a pretty punt. Sands, great coverage. Penalty flag because, and it appears he might have been in the zone a little bit too quickly. Jonathan McPhee with the tackle. Yeah, that two yard halo, it looks you like. Ball as it, as we play right now, ball's at the 48. Halo violation against the kicking team. The 10 yard penalty. First down. So add that to the mistakes, the halo violation. Now it looks like he was engaged at a time, but he never held up. That's the problem. He was engaged by Marshall number 25, but he never held up on the uh, would-be returner, and that's a, that's a cause for a penalty on McPhee. So you go from the 48 to the 35. Temple staff saying, hey, we have to pitch a perfect game. Well, they had a fumble that led to a fumble on a kickoff led to a touchdown a punt returned by Sands near the end of the first half for 49 yards to set up a score fumbled by Sharps led to a TD a punt block and now this one this big penalty the halo violation Miami starts its drive at the Temple 35. I would look for some play action here possibly straight drop screen and nobody home the game he got knocked down back to the right side. Actually, it was a great job by Temple sniffing yep. out the screen. The defensive lineman did an awesome job of trying to find Willis McGahee. I think it was Dan Klecko that got an, uh, a big fistful of jersey on him, wouldn't let him go. Good recognition by the defensive front that time for Temple. Klecko not at 100% efficiency health-wise, bad ankle. You can tell how tough of a player he is. He probably missed two or three plays this entire game. You bet. Second down and 10 for the 35. The game, he stumbles, regains. Boy, look at that. He ran out of a tackle and picked up about four extra yards. It's a nice job. Thompson finally got him. And that's going to be going to leave him about third down and three. That's one of the greatest attributes about this Miami running game is they break the first tackle, usually carry you along for a couple more. And just an excellent job by Jamal Wallace trying to get McGahee down, but an even better job by Willis keeping going towards the first down. From the gun on third and three. Bring the blitz. And that's how they went for Winslow. A bad throw by Dorsey. Miscommunication, reading that body language, and not real good out there right now, but the youngster didn't go where the quarterback thought he was going to be. Yeah, the high-low combination between number nine, Kevin Beard, and Kevin Winslow looked like, I didn't know, do I have high, do I have low? They almost ran into each other, threw the timing off with the quarterback, Ken Dorsey. 45-yard field goal coming up. 
by Todd Seavers. He's calling 46 from the far right hash. Well, he got a lot of foot into it, but he pulled it wide to the left. So Seavers on the afternoon is two for four in kicking field goals. It looked like the, the timing was screwed up by Todd Seavers there. It looked like he started to go to kick the football and then he stopped. And I, I think that's what he's complaining on the sidelines about. If we can get another look at that, he's talking to Larry Coker on the sidelines. That I think the kicker started and then he stopped. Watch Todd start right here and then he regains himself. And the timing is really screwed up between center and the exchange with the holder. And that'll throw anything will throw a kicker off. Believe me, I've heard every excuse in the book. But <laughs> when kickers, you know, not to put it on Todd Sievers, he needs to be in good rhythm. And that wasn't good rhythm by the special teams of Miami. We'll make a correction. Sievers one out of three. Missed from 35. Good from 31. And missed from 46. 528 to go in the third. Temple begins this drive. Sharps and tough yardage starting from his own 28 yard line. Glad you could join us for a Big East football today. Number one, Miami taking on Temple here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia. Dave Sims along with Don, uh, John Kinjemi and Greg Roberts. How about your total yard story? Yeah. yeah. Miami 284 to Temple 111. Temple's got to take a shot here. Five minutes left to go in the third quarter. They've got decent field position just past their own 30 yard line around the 32. Got to do something on second and six here. Temple in the spread offense that blitz the corner. And you called it, John. You absolutely called it. Antrell Roll having a field day. He's totally unaccounted for and got in. They contributed it on that sack. Well, the biggest adjustment Miami has made is they're going man coverage and they're bringing Antro roll because when Temple goes empty, which means they don't have anybody else in the backfield except the quarterback, they only have five guys up front blocking. Miami's bringing six. It's just an even an odd number. There's not enough people to block Antro roll and a great job from the back end that time by Jerome McDougal. Initial pressure by roll and the cleanup by McDougal. Indeed, second sack of the day for the Canes. Loss of 10, third down at 16. Draw. Race running into the 30. Eight yard pickup. It will bring on the punt team. Last time Maurice Sykes got in here on the special teams play for Miami. Look for Miami to put pressure again, seeing that this uh, special teams unit can do from Temple. Second straight, three and out for the offensive unit for the Temple Owls. In the position before that, as John mentioned, there was watch punt. Five punts, one block. Gets that one off. Sands makes the catch. 29-yard line, fair catch. That was a 41-yard punt. We talked so much about Dan Klecko, who's an All-American candidate. Unanimous first team all Big East coming back, and there's a look at Big Joe who played here at Temple. Back in the 70s, went on go, to uh, all pro fame with the New York Jets. Part of the sack exchange with Abdul Salam and Mark Gastineau, Marty Lyons. And I tell you what, a lot of quarterbacks felt his wrath during Joe's career. He was all pro in multiple positions along the D line. This is a great shot right here. Back to live action. And there's a catch by the fullback. Wadreen Hill stays on his feet. Cross the 45 to the 48-yard line. First down, Miami. Let's go down to Greg Roberts standing by with Joe Klecko. Hey, guys, look who I found. Former NFL and Temple great Joe Klecko, the father of Dan Klecko. Is that how people refer to you now? Yeah, I, I want to refer that way. I'm tired of, you know, <laughs> every, poor, every time poor Dan gets an article or something like that, it's son of. So now he's getting his own identity. Joe, you spent a lot of years in the league. How does your son project at the next level? Well, you know, it's going to be up to him. You know, he's a little short for the, you know, uh, perfect defensive lineman, but uh, he's got a lot of skills. He's a good football player. You know, when I was growing up, people said I looked a lot like you. Is that good or bad? I was going to say, did you smack him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. It's we not all bad, Big We don't agree at all. <laughs> Back to you guys. <laughs> Did you smack him? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Greg. 
and Danny's getting some treatment right now on that last play. How about the gears by McGee? He set up his block, saw it, and it was gone. Yeah, and there's the picture of, of young uh, of the young Klecko to the elder Klecko, and he's right. I mean, Danny's done such an excellent job uh, in his four years here being recognized, you know, all Big East last year. He, he stands alone, you know, when you want to talk about a Klecko, you can talk about Dan and not mention Joe. First and 10 Miami at the 36 after 17 yard McGahee run. Dorsey throws, and he's got another receiver. This is Beard down the sideline. They get him out of bounds at the four yard line. First and goal Miami. Kevin Beard, who came into the game with no catches, has had a fabulous day. That's a 34-yard catch. I think he's making up for lost time. Kevin Beard comes in, and a strike by Ken Dorsey. Nice pitch and catch to the outside. Now it's all speed. It's a foot race down to the sideline. Jackson finally pulls him out around the four-yard line, but Ken Dorsey back in rhythm. His feet were set, delivered the football on time. That's what happens when you get this high-octane offense in a rhythm. You're going to pay. Miami, I believe, had too many people on the field that they have to call a timeout. Beard, six catches for 69 yards. And in this possession now, the Canes have gone first down, first down, first down, and first down. Yeah, and Willis McGahee, a big part of that early with a big run off to the right side, and then a huge play by Kevin Beard off the off the golden arm of Ken Dorsey. A couple of teams that like to get their fortunes turned around and moving in the right direction. We'll see them next week, next Saturday at noon Eastern. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights take on the Pittsburgh Panthers at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Rutgers in Pittsburgh, Saturday, September 21st, noon Eastern time. Check your local listings game in your area. Ken Dorsey passing wise today that defensive unit for the Temple Owls has seen Dorsey go 17 catches 17 completions out of 31 attempts 244 yards and one touchdown. Yeah, it just adds to his uh, numerous records at the University of Miami. There you see on the sidelines talking with quarterbacks coach Dan Werner who's you know done an excellent job. I mean it's it's hard to screw up Ken Dorsey but you know Dan does such an excellent job of of keeping his poise on the sidelines because he has such a great demeanor and a great uh, rapport with his quarterbacks and the wideouts and and nobody does it better than this guy right here. There you see Ken Dorsey as a starter 28 and one overall. 10 and 1 versus ranked opponents. That's the biggest thing, you know, the wins and how you play in big games. And he's thrown for 200 plus yards 21 times in his career, and uh, he's not finished. Only loss was to the Hokies of Virginia Tech back in 1999. Kenny's 18 and 0 in the Big East as a starter. All over the quarterback records at the University of Miami. Fade pattern going for Paris. Got his hands on it. No sir, coverage by Leftwich. Rasco Parrish a lot of number one out there. Yeah, and he's a quick guy. Only 5'9. Kind of surprised they're trying to beat him outside with speed. He made an excellent catch, just ran out of real estate. Good throw and catch, just ran out of room. Good pr pressure that time. Left, which pinning him to the sidelines, making it be a perfect throw to beat him. How about Dorsey coming into today's game? Had 65 touchdowns, all time lead at Miami to 19 different receivers. Yeah, it's incredible. Second and goal from the four. Winston, the tight end in motion. McGee cuts it inside, fights his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Again, he makes that perfect 90 degree cut, powers in, and it's 37 14. And Davey's so strong, you, you, you forget about how strong he is inside the tackles. You see the great burst of speed to the outside, but when you get inside the, the plus scoring zone, inside the 20, inside the 10, he's going to make you pay between the tackles, and he did right there. Fourth rushing touchdown for McGahee on the afternoon. And Severs pops that one through. Actually, it pushed it to the right, baby. Pushed it to the right. So it's 37 14, 212 to go, third period. McGahee has had a fabulous afternoon. He's well deserved of that drink on the sidelines because. He's been doing it outside and now inside. You said it. Watch the cut right here. No hesitation. He's going up and over with a full head of steam, reaching the football over, breaking arm tackles. He's got so much strength in this offensive line. We talked about him in the open. They do a terrific job of trying to create some creases for Willis McGahee to get through. Watch the power. He's initially hit about the two-yard line and just carries Temple defenders into the end zone. No eyes, but I tell you what, everybody, everybody's eyes in the stands on Willis McGahee right there. Just strengthens 
and speed a great combination for number two. Big play in that drive the 34 yard pass completion to Beard McGahey with a four yard run capping that drive at 570 and 117. Wasting no time. Something we told you about before how quickly Miami is able to score. On for the day 21 carries a buck 34 for McGahey and a fair catch made at the 24 yard line by Troy Bennett. So Miami came in overwhelming favorite. Temple made a really good run to close the 21 14. They gave up a late field goal late second quarter for a 10 point deficit and then McGee stacked on a couple of touchdowns and it's 37 14. Yeah the backbreaker was when they came out at halftime and Tonardo Sharps on the first play of the third quarter they put it on the carpet. Encroachment on a kicking team. Kickers were offside. Penalties declined. First down. So the Owls put it in play at their own 25 yard line. 2.07 to go here in the third. We've seen what one fairly deep pass. Nothing along the sidelines. We saw a deep uh, the deep curl. That's the deepest pass attempt we've seen. Play out. There he goes wide open. Oh my goodness gracious. And again is run out of bounds by Maurice Sykes. But the receiver was dead wide open. You're right. Yeah, it looked like Cobb, number 27, the, the split end. It was great play action by the quarterback, Mike McGann. No one on Miami's defense knew where the football was, but you got to look downfield. Cobb was standing alone by himself. No one was around. Again, nine rushes for 39 yards. First and ten for the Owls. Exactly two minutes to go, third period. Nine first downs on the afternoon for Temple. Blitz the corner. Sharps doesn't find any room. Tremendous penetration inside. As they unpile. They have, indeed, it was number 75. That's what I thought. Vince Wolfork, who got in there to really blow that play up. Let's check out the Ameritrade out of town scores right now. The Big East okay. schedule starting before long. Yeah. It's the Orangemen hosting the Rhode Island Rams. Pittsburgh's at UAB. Army at Rutgers at 7 o'clock. And West Virginia takes on a tough Cincinnati club at 7 p. Second down and 10 at the 35. Sharps. It seemed like he never got going. And again, there's another example of that extraordinary Miami speed. Again, it was Antrell Roll who's just been killing Temple the last half hour, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. like. Well, Temple's offensive line shouldn't feel bad. They're in a long line of people that can be dominated by this Miami defensive front. And Temple was in this football game at, at the halftime, and Miami's defensive front right now is doing a great job of winning the line of scrimmage battle. Third down, long eight coming up. Temple's converted just one of nine third down attempts. Reset, reset the game clock. One minute. Good catch by the side judge, Patrick Garvey. Doing one minute. Jack Kramer that the clock needed to be readjusted here at Franklin Field. Oh, geez, they're going to have it's one of those old clocks. They got to go all the way down to come all the way back. They can't just do a simple reset. They may maybe just hold it at what it was and we'd be okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> there we go. We've got it to double zeros now. There you go. For those of you who haven't seen Franklin Field in a long time, that's obviously a fairly new scoreboard. They used to have the old fashioned sweep pad clocks in the corners to our right. Don't be going and showing anybody your age now. I don't mind. I mean, proud to still be here, pal. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> so many big games here. Pennsylvania back in the 40s. Chuck Bednarik, late 40s, early 50s. A national powerhouse. Yeah, this is a great, great old stadium. Third down and eight. Seven. Third down and eight on the 37-yard uh, line from again. Four-man rush. He's a truck. Oh, man. 
was he in trouble? Will Fork was in there. Cornelius Green was in there. And number 99, Andrew Williams in there. And this is the same type of attack you saw last week against Florida. They just rushed the front four and they kill you. Yeah, it looked like the Temple offensive line is, is starting to suck wind a little bit. They're getting a little bit sloppy with their technique, and that's all Miami needs to see because they will be relentless. They'll, f they'll file in seven, eight defensive front players, and they'll keep everybody fresh up front, and that's what will happen if you hold on to it too long. Here's the punt. By Ringwellski, Parrish got a wall set up. Reverses to come back to it. Oh, he did a great job. Here's the wall. 35. He stays in bounds. Oh man, you see that last hit, Sean Taylor. Woo! Boy, there was an unfortunate son over there, Sean Taylor, with the hit on Joey Lippo. But a great job by Parrish. He had the return right. He started and then reversed it and made something out of it. 41 yards on a punt and 18 yard return. So yeah, make the first guy miss, and, and that's exactly what Roscoe does here. Great reverse spin move back to the Miami sideline, and watch the hit right here by number 26. If you can see it right at the end of the Boom, run, right, right there. there. Oh my goodness, tattooed. Miami football, first and 10 now, 37 yard line. They're only 37. And a good defensive stand that time by Tasso Apostolitis, number 93 for Temple. Yeah, that was an excellent defensive stand that time by the defensive front of Temple. Winning the battle at the line of scrimmage, pushing Miami. The white shirts were going backwards on that play. Loss of looks like around two yards. What? What was it? Thought we had motorcycles in here, but was that, was that a flyover or is that fans <laughs> banging on the I don't stands know. here? County, right? Say if that was a flyover, they missed the opening oh, kickoff. That's by right. several hours. <laughs> there we go, right there. 37 14 as we've got three quarters in the books here at Franklin Field. Helicopter landing nearby. University of Pennsylvania and Larry Coker's club. Looks like he's going to remain unbeaten. Big East play. Tenacious, ferocious defense by the number one team in the country. You add in Willis McGee, you've got a 37 14 score after three. Philadelphia, everybody, number one Miami with a 37 14 lead as we head into the fourth quarter. And here's the story of your game. A yeah. guy named McGahee. That's the guy right there. Four times he's gone into the end zone, but Kevin Beard pitches in here on a nice pitch and catch by Ken Dorsey. But it's been all Willis McGahee. Four touchdowns on the afternoon. He's gone in from the right side, he's gone in from the left. Tenardo Sharps, though, answered for Temple twice before halftime, once from one yard out, again from 16 yards out. Tenardo Sharps finding some fire before halftime halftime but then it's the Willis McGahee show on again behind that big offensive line and watch him carry bodies into the end zone to bring it to 37 to 14. Young man makes his cuts beautifully when he has an opening and that play will get stopped. There was movement on both sides of the ball. It looked like Tyrone Ditzel the right defensive end for Temple. A little bit early. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. But Carlos Joseph on the uh, far side, and that was a good look at our Guinness Game Summary. And here's the Guinness Game Summary right here. Dorsey. Kenny Dorsey, yeah, on fire. 17-32, 244 and one touchdown, and 14 points off of turnovers for each team. But Tenardo Sharps for for Temple coming back with 79 yards and two rushing TDs. But there's a story, ties a school record for rushing TDs, four touchdowns and 134 yards. Dorsey's hit seven different receivers today. Here's the screen to Gethers. Gethers with running room. And he picks up almost all of the yardage from that penalty. That bring up a, that was a 20 yard pickup. 33,169 on hand here at Franklin Field. And a good crowd watching a, a pretty good football game. Got real tight at halftime, and then Temple comes out on the first play, fumbles the football, and that really turned the fortunes in Miami's favor. And they have a third and three now with Kenny Dorsey still at the helm with 14-25 left to go before this game will be ended. When they had that fumble, you could feel the, the whole surge go out of the Temple ball club. Sands shakes free. Race now to the 30, 20, 10, 5. 
touchdown. All right, they're going to say he's out of bounds at the three-yard line. It looked like the Temple folks had a chance to catch him between the 30 and the 15, but Sands has spectacular speed. That's what Miami does. They usually make the first guy miss, and when they do, it's a foot race to the sidelines and to the end zone. Ethnic Sands putting on a spectacular performance on the outside. Watch just a simple hitch pattern. Makes one, two guys miss, and now it's a foot race. Looks like he steps out around the four-yard line. With number 21, David Reese finally pushing him out of bounds, but Miami can, they're deadly from anywhere on the field, but if you make somebody miss, then it's a foot race. Miami usually comes up a victor in that category. There you see Ethnic Sands, two receptions for 64 yards. A gain of 53 yards for Sands. Just his second catch of the afternoon. Winston in motion. Thank you to McGahey. Wide open, there's Winston. That's it. For Jalen Winslow, his second TD of the season. Dorsey's second TD pass this afternoon. And number nine on the season. Yeah, made that one look easy. That was pitch and catch. That's sometimes the hardest throw to, to make when he's wide open. You just want to make it so easy for your receiver. And Kellen Winslow wide open for his, as you said, second touchdown on the season. Time after Severs missed his last one. Timeout on the field, 57 seconds into the fourth quarter. It's 44 14 Miami over Temple. Big play, the 53 yard run by Sands, and then Dorsey makes it look real easy. You got to honor the play fake. Winslow's got six. Kellen Winslow's got a heck of a career in front of him. His second touchdown of the season, Miami 44 to 14. Another guy having a terrific day is Ken Dorsey, the quarterback. And might he be in line to do what these gentlemen did at Miami? Vinny Testaverde wins the 86 Heisman Trophy. He got 678 of 790 first place votes. Temple's Paul Palmer, by the way, finished second. He's in uh, in the building as a radio reporter. Then in 1992, Gino Toretta. On the Heisman, he finished ahead of Marshall Falk and Garrison Hurst. Went for 3,060 yards passing and 19 touchdowns. And that line of quarterback, the possession, possession continues. And Ken Dorsey, his numbers today, making a strong case of the way things are going. He's coming in as a very, very efficient passer. Yeah, pretty good afternoon, if you want to say so myself. 20 at 35, 314, two touchdowns. That's his fourth 300-yard game. but. I think the big stats that, that I like, the most career touchdowns and his record as a as starting quarterback. Yep. That makes the case for, for him being, if not winning the Heisman, one of the Heisman, you know, hopefuls one, two, or three right now because nobody does it any better at the position than Ken Dorsey. Here's your return. It's an open running road down the far sideline. That's Lawrence Wade. And he was brought down, Akeem Jola. John Ken Jemmy, very successful in the uh, Celebrity Golf Tours, having a fine day here, keeping this <laughs> be free. I tell you what, I feel like I'm returning serve. I'm telling you, it looks like uh, some of these bees came in from a nearby aircraft carrier. <laughs> I thought that was what we heard over the stadium. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right, back it up a little bit. A little light rain falling now at uh, Franklin Field. Man, a lot of clouds. Started off as a bright, sunny day. Now, Clouding up. They do have lights here should we need them. Temple came in. More than a five touchdown underdog. And Sharks took a monster hit in the middle. How about that? Number 58 got his money's worth. I'm telling you, as they start to empty the bench here for Miami, that was Gerald Weaver. Yeah, big time hit by the linebacker. Weaver comes in, hasn't played much today, and bang, right there, standing up, Tornado Sharps right in the hole. Only about a two or three yard game. Brings up second and seven for this Al offense. If it's not wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, it's linebackers at Miami. Everybody. Fake it, screen. Pretty good read by the dude lineman. Good move. Sure was. That's a tremendous, tremendous play. Draws a party at the 40 yard line. And he got that to Lester Trammer. Trammer is a uh, senior out of Greenbelt, Maryland. 
Yeah, that's his first catch on the Let season, yep. Trammer. Number 20, watch the, the little move on the outside. Bingy makes a miss, Antrell roll, and then he makes another good move. Good arm tackles, uh, breaking free. Good strong run from Trammer. You gotta like that, it, you know, it's 44-14, and you got guys coming in that are seniors that are giving it all they've got. Third down and two at the Temple 43. Continue to run it up the middle. I guess the figure, let's get out of here without any further damage. I guess so. I mean, that was well, well defended by Miami. McDougal still in the football game. You got Jamal Green in the football game. Maurice Sykes. So a lot of these guys up front. Orion Harris in the football game. A lot of energy still in that uh, defensive front for Miami. Do have uh, Alfonso Marshall, number 25 in a cornerback. These DBs, I mean, there hasn't been much that you could say on the downside for Miami. And that was number 69, Damian Hendricks, senior out of Millville, New Jersey, moving ahead of the snap count. Good job, baby. Prior to the snap, fault start, offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. So they were going to go with it on fourth down. and. They're going to have to punt now, Temple Well, Glad you could join us for Big East football. Miami, number one this week, taking on Temple oh House. Steve Sims and John Jimmy and Greg Roberts. Temple, sixth penalty for 42 yards. So we approach 11 and a half to go in the ballgame. Ninth punt from the Ring Wellski. Harris runs up, makes the catch at the 27 yard line. Look at the speed. He's got a roll. off of everybody they really didn't touch anybody he was just taking out people that weren't there can't teach that 29 yard return by Roscoe Parrish he's a red shirt freshman he's going to be around you folks in the Big East looking at Derek Curtis 6'1 202 a sophomore from Deerfield Beach Florida he had a heck of a spring game, 253 yards and yeah. three touchdowns. And he can run it, too. He's a great athlete at quarterback out of Deerfield Beach High School in uh, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Jarrett Payton, the son of the late great Walter Payton's in the game. Talib Humphrey's in at fullback. Humphrey in motion. Pettup's going to throw. First and snap. Oh, good looking throw. Got a man there. He grab the hands. First down, Miami. He got it to Akeem Jola, the freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana, out of St. Augustine High School. Yeah, and welcome to the to Miami. His first catch is a hurricane and a great delivery from Derek in the pocket. Just a, a nice throw and catch. Great hands on the outside. Miami's uh, second team coming in, not missing a beat. Just frightening. What an arsenal for the Hurricanes. Jola is flanked right in the slot. The Sinoris Moss. Peyton, young Peyton, Jared Peyton hit in the backfield. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Postalitis with the tackle. There you see Jared Peyton had some injuries early in the year. We had some lower back problems. Closer to 100% now. Played a little bit last week in some cleanup duty at Florida. But see, out of Illinois, the junior. Played tailback, played fullback, did it all for Miami. Wherever he's been asked to, to, to play, he's been very productive. Jared Payton played mainly soccer in high school. Right. Doesn't have, doesn't have a whole lot of football under his belt. That time. Oh, he hit the tight end on the hand. Penalty flag. Got to be a hold. Tried to get it to Eric Winston, freshman out of Midland, Texas. And your rights are holding on the Hurricanes. That second unit on the O-line, left to right, Rashad Butler, Joe McGrath, Joel Rodriguez, Ed Wilkins, and Tony Teller. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Let's look ahead here, John. Still got plenty of football to go in this 2002 season. 
next week for the Canes they have Boston College. Boston College struggled mightily against Connecticut in both weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah both weeks they've had tough football games and they get them down on the Orange Bowl so that's a break for Miami after last year's scare up in Boston College. But Miami's uh, had a, a tale of a couple different seasons and uh, we'll get into that in a little bit the way their schedule plays out for sure. Them. Second down to 20 to 35. They turned on the lights here at Franklin Field. Credit. And he's got it outside again to Akeem Jola. So second catch of the day for Jola. There's the schedule for the Kings. BC. Then they have a week off. Play Connecticut. Week off. Play Florida State. Yeah, Bobby they, Bowden probably doesn't like the yeah, fact that they get an extra week. Absolutely right? not. But the way it starts out, you know, you have AM where you get to play a lot of guys and you go to Florida. You have Temple where you're going to play a lot of guys in the second half, hopefully, and then you have BC at home. You have Connecticut where you're going to get some more experience for your young players. Then you play Florida State at home. So until they get to the Big East and meet of the Big East, they're going to play a lot of people in these first six games. Just remarkable. Incredible. Quick drive. Flushed. He's in trouble. He stops. And he pitch for it back at the 49 yard line. Third sack of the day by the Temple Owls. That was great pursuit that time by the Temple defensive front. Looked like four or five guys around Derek Crude up in the backfield making him pay for a big loss. Probably a loss of over 15 yards, but nowhere to go with the football initially. Derek slides to his right and, and eludes Amontre, but then there's too many maroon shirts around it that just swallow him up. He loses his helmet at the end of it. He looks like he's okay to come back next series, but it'll bring up a fourth down for this Miami special teams unit. Third part here by Freddie Capshaw. Whoa, head up, Steve. For the sideline. How about that? A coffin corner effort. Let's see where they mark it. Not bad. How about the 12 yard line? Have you noticed in both pro and college that hardly don't anybody see that anymore? Well, what yeah. is up with that? And you see so many kicks go into the end zone, you go, wow, how could they do that? You got to at least give it a shot. That's right. Time out on the field, 922 to go on Miami, 44 14. Today's Big East football game from Philadelphia has been brought to you by. Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Discover Card, it pays to discover. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And by Guinness Draft Stop, enjoyed responsibly the world over. Good look at the skyline of Philadelphia. A lot of Miami fans in attendance here, a crowd of more than 33,000. Dave Sims, John Kinjemi, and Greg Robertson, our Big East crew on hand at Franklin Field. New quarterback is Mike Frost. And oof, boy, hit from behind. This is second unit D line for Miami. And again, tremendous, tremendous speed. Thomas Carroll, number 90, made the hit. Mike Frost, Californian, at Chino Hills with the Glendale Community College, eight games a year ago. Almost 39 percent through for three touchdowns and nine picks. Clock running at 847 to go in the ballgame. Going to run Wade to the edge. And he's taken down quickly by Greg Threat. There, is there a minimum standard that they have in terms of speed to become a Miami? Because it's got to be like four, six, five. I was just going to say that it doesn't fall off very much, especially when you go into the second and third guys. Everybody's got speed. And, and really, in Miami, a lot of those kids are staying home yeah. in South Florida. And through the years, through the last 10 to 15 to 18 years, right. a lot of those guys that used to go to Michigan, sure. Ohio State, wherever you wanted to go mm -hmm. in the country, have stayed home. And they've They've really built up their their team speed, you know, throughout those years. Sure. I mean, you got the young guys following. Says, "Hey, man, I want to be I one of be, you guys." That's right. I mean, this is just remarkable. Running up the middle, and a tackle again made by Thomas Carroll. He had some help in there from Howard Clark. Howard Clark's got to be real happy being back home from Pensac in New Jersey, right across the river. He's a senior, and he hasn't had a lot of uh, chances to play in the last couple of weeks because of the spread offenses that. Florida A&M and Florida and actually Temple is used all day today. So 
Howard getting in some uh, playing time here back in his you know, close to his hometown. No question about it. Wade with the carry. First and 10 at the 23 for the Owls. Three carries, 11 yards for Wade. It's a call again. Tried to take it outside. He got run over. He got absolutely run over by Brandon Merriweather. Merriweather comes up quickly. The closing speed is just not to be believed. Well, checks him out of town. Scores brought to you by the good folks at Ameritrade. You go Notre Dame. I wonder if that's an O touchdown or a D touchdown. I, I, I would think D. <laughs> I don't know. They haven't had one yet. Seven nothing over number six Michigan. Wow, Cal going 39 points against 15th ranked Michigan State, Wisconsin, down to Northern Illinois, 21 17. Well, they can't be liking that. No, we're Wisconsin. They thought that was a gimme last week when we were out there. Oh my goodness, you see that hit? A helmet comes off. That was number 69, John Ward. Bringing the wood. Oh. John this is a two by four. <laughs> Big time hit by some of these young players. I mean, and this is invaluable to these guys getting some game experience on both sides. It goes for Temple's offensive line trying to gain some experience, but nothing could stop number 69 Wood on that play. Just a, a, a whiff by John Gross, number 78. And John Wood, you see the freshman out of Hialeah, Florida, coming in on the play. Good size, too, 6'3. Third down and three at the 30. Mike Frost, and it's Cubs and running room for Temple. How about this? Some speed as well. Sean Sarka inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. First down now. Gerald Weaver makes the stop. Hands him up from Alfonso Marshall. Hey, Where's he been? I don't know, but credit Dave Yovanovitz, number 79, the left tackle. We haven't mentioned him much. You know, he, he's been a stellar, a pillar at that left tackle position for Temple over the last three and a half years. And what a kickout block. And it let Zarka go down the left sideline, down the Temple sideline. Looked like Weaver, 58, coming over for the tackle. But just a nice kickout block by that big offensive tackle. They list Zarka having 4-4-2 speed. And suck his son of New Jersey went to Roxborough High School. Three straight years of a thousand plus on the ground. And nothing much doing there. Straight plunge up the middle. Wade with the carry. After having seen Virginia Tech against Marshall Thursday night, you love what Virginia Tech does defensively. They sledgehammer you with the running game, but there's still a question mark. QB. It, absolutely, they can't throw the football. And uh, against Miami, you're going to need to be quite balanced on offense, and especially playing down at the Orange Bowl. I think Virginia Tech's a different team at home. And when they get on the road, especially in a tough environment at the Orange Bowl, I think it's night and day, you know, compared to the way they play at home. That game is a long way off December 7. Underneath, oh, Mazarka knew he had running room, too. He had running room. He had a closing Orion Harris, a defensive lineman. Sarka was ready to maybe get on the board. Hit him, yeah. right in the hand, hit him right in the chest. He didn't catch it with the hands. He let it get into his pad. Looked like the head just came up at the last second and went right through his hands too. Got to his chest. And you hate to see that as a quarterback. Good two throws by Mike Frost. And there you see the Temple play selection. 36 rushes today and only 17 passes through the air. What did you say to guys like that who were running free and you hit them and then they let the ball hit their hands? Well, they know they've made the mistake more than you do. You just try to pat them on the back and say, we're going to get him, you know, we'll get it again. Just don't let it happen. <laughs> 37 at the 24. Wade. And he's stymied. Maybe a game of. Well, it's called game two. But that, that's frustrating for quarterback. You really got to keep yourself up. It's almost like in golf. Hey, forget that check. Go to the next Go to the next one, right? Go on to the next play because you don't have that much time to think about it. You can watch it on film the next day. Given that burst, the speed that Zark had, I mean, he separated. Granted, it's a Miami second unit, but these guys, I bet the average speed on the, in the, the back seven is probably what, 4-4? Four, four? I would think easy, yeah. Although he was right there. Around. Zarka did a nice job. Fourth down at five at the 22. Black running at 4 7 And Frost, not comfortable with what he sees in front of him, calls a timeout. Yeah, it looked like they were lining up for that shovel pass to the weak side that was successful earlier in the game. We'll take a break here at Franklin Field. Temple's got two times out remaining, down 30. 
any loss in football is tough. But for Temple, their coaching staff's going to have a hard time sleeping tonight. 44-14. It was a 24-14 game at one point. But Temple gave it away. First play from scrimmage to start the second half. It's been all downhill since then. Here's Mike Frost. Fourth down and five. 22-yard line of the Kings. And Blitz in the corner. The throw up to Zonka. He's got Rome. He's got the five touchdown. Sean Zonka. Might be earning some significant playing time in the very immediate future. Absolutely, just a nice slant move. And uh, Merriweather, Brandon Merriweather, Merriweather on the coverage, just can't keep up with Zarka, number 26. He showed flashes of that speed the last couple of times he's touched the football. That time, a nice throw by the backup quarterback, Mike Frost, and Temple pushes the score to 44 to 20. Heck of an afternoon off the bench for Scott Zarka. He's got. 71 yards in receiving on two catches. Here's Pac Lumba. And Cap able to bang it through. He's got three PATs today. He's a perfect seven for seven on the season. 44 21. And if you're Temple, oh, we had not fumbled. Coming out from halftime, but a, a great strike there by Mike Frost. Three steps, knew where he wanted to go with the football. You get the gamble by Merriweather on the corner, and Zarka's got such good speed. If you give him a step, he's going to take it to the house. Watch him right here, just break the tackle untouched, and he goes into the end zone. So this score is going to look a heck of a lot more respectable. Yeah, and you know what? It's too bad Temple didn't come out and give a, a better showing in that third quarter because they had all the momentum going to the locker room. Miami gets a field goal to make it a 10-point lead, and they just didn't do anything after that. And on this, this Temple scoring drive, 10 plays, 88 yards, took a ball of 527. Zarka, 22-yard TD reception from Frost. Frost was 2 of 3 on the series, or on the scoring drive for 65 yards. Very impressive on that 22-yard strike. Zarka three catches 71 yards. 44 to 21. Now the big plays in this game that will bring some sleepless hours for the Temple staff. Starting the second half with the fumble. There was another fumbled kickoff return. Just absolute killers. Gathers about two yards deep. Right thing, keeps it right there. How about this young man, Willis McGay? He's sophomore from Central High School in Miami. What a day he has had. Unbelievable day for Willis McGay. He started from right from the opening bell. The gun went off and he started scoring touchdowns. One from one yard out there from six yards out and then the power running inside the tackles. Once he got inside the scoring zone, he was unstoppable. Watch him carry defenders into the end zone. Four touchdowns on the afternoon. He had 21 carries for 144 yards. He also touched it three times through the air for 33 yards. As Jared Payton skating along, getting outside, gain of 10, making 11 yard lines as Lewis McGahee. Congratulations for being our Outback Steakhouse. Outstanding back of the game. Take you back to the first quarter. It was 7 0 Miami. Wade fumbled the ensuing kickoff. Three plays later, Dorsey to Beard made it 14 0. That was one of the several critical mistakes made by the outs. Yeah, absolutely. Wills McGee, he looks like he has some kind of device on his ankle as we have a Temple out down in the middle of the football field. That was number 11, Terrence Belvin. Backup linebackers look at uh, McGee. He had a lot of great running backs at Miami in the last 15 years and he certainly put his name right in the mix. Absolutely with the you know coming off of a performance against Florida 204 yards. Um, he, you know he's just a terrific back because he's got such a great combination of strength and size and speed. He's got that burst and he can run inside the tackles. First uh, this is the first four TD game rushing by a hurricane since the great Melvin Bratton did it against Way Boston back College then. back in November 23rd of 84. Absolutely. Melvin and actually, was Mel back. Oh, yes, he was. I saw him last year as a scout for the Colts. And actually, that day, Melvin had two run, 
two yard run a one yard run a 52 yard run and a one yard run and a 47 45 BC game. I think that's the Flutie game. Matter of yeah, fact I know absolutely. it is the Flutie game. Absolutely. Yeah. Gahey over 100 yards second week in a row. He went for 204 last week. You see Terrence Belvin coming off the football field. A little got, bit of a limp. Yeah, he got hurt, I believe, in the first quarter. Yeah, he's a, a, a Florida product out of Palmetto, so you know he didn't want to come out of this football game. Oh, no, no, that's exactly right. So 3.38 to go, second teamers for Miami. They were pretty impressive the last time they had the ball. They didn't score, but they moved the ball. Derek Kirk, back at quarterback, Sonoris and Mars, uh, Mars rather, is out of your picture at the bottom of the screen. And they look for Moss. Here's the throw, makes the catch. Younger brother Santana Moss. He's got the same elusiveness. And he gets it to the 44-yard line. That's a first down pick up of 11. Yeah, Sonoris Moss on the outside doing a nice job getting that reception and taking it upfield for the first down. Good throw. I've been impressed with Kudum's arm coming off the bench. He has a big, big strong kid, 6'1", 201, a sophomore. And you see Sonoris down on the sideline. His smallish demeanor, but he can fly. Mm -hmm. Derek's dead. Derek Sr. Played for Florida and Oklahoma and the Oakland Raiders. Three minutes to go in a 44-21 game. Payton caught by Klepko. Payton does a nice job to get away. Second effort by Klepko makes the tackle. That's an outstanding play. I have a feeling that was, wasn't the first time those two names have met. <laughs> Jared Payton. Just his fifth season of football. In a foot injury as a sophomore. He's a junior now. He did some, uh, stepped on some coral while he was scuba diving. Right. That happens in Miami. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Peyton gets the call. Picks up about three. Peyton, they're trying to run him. Yeah, get him some playing time. He had, sure. He's been out with a back injury. They want to get him some playing time just in case something happens. But they're, they've got plenty of depth at that running back position. Actually, they get Kyle Kobe back probably at the fullback spot to help out Hill, uh, number 23, who's played an exceptional game. He's done a, a great job blocking today. Sure enough. See if they throw it Ryan Moore. He's at cut up right. They look that way. They throw it to the tight end. First time a catch today by Eric Winston. Freshman out of Midland, Texas. Big kid, 6'5", 260. Yeah, Miami's got a, a plethora of tight ends that, that are very big and that can run. You know, David Williams, the backup, 6'3", 220, is only a sophomore out of Miami. Boss is going to go to the left. Got a Keen Joa. Incredible. Pretty good day, four for four. 51 yards. Trying to draw to Peyton. Peyton trying to scoot outside. And there's the, the first that McGahee and Gethers and all the super backs that Miami's had. That's the gear that they have to get outside. Absolutely. And they can make it switch on a dime, too. It, it, it's one thing to get them stood up in, the, in, the, in a hole, but these guys are so elusive, they can power right through you and make you, make you bring two or three, four bodies to bring you down. There you see Peyton's numbers, five rushes for 21 yards on the on the afternoon. It's winding down inside of a minute now. Well, I think our stage manager, Bob Anderson, Rich Freesha, Mike Harrington on stats. Peyton, oh man, smoked in the backfield this time. Nowhere to run. Sure enough. Tyrone Ditzel, number 98, got in there. And uh, Ira Almonte also in there. I want to thank our spotter. John Hazelbarth and in the truck, the graphics, Derek Capetta and Mark Vidonic. Thank you one and all. That should do it. Mike Montoni, our director, and Casey Carter, our producer. Not a surprise, but Temple did have an opportunity to make this a ball game. Too many mistakes. They couldn't pitch the perfect game, and Miami remains number one. A resounding 44-21 win. Star of your show.
Willis McGee, he went four scores and over 100 yards. You see how the respect that the Miami players have. There's Romberg. Romberg has tremendous respect for young Dan Cueco. From Franklin Field in Philadelphia again, our final score, Miami 44, Temple 21. Be sure to join us next Saturday, September 21st at noon Eastern. Rutgers in Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh. And we'll have it for you. For John Kinjemi, Greg Roberts, and our entire Big East crew, I'm Dave Sims. Miami rolls again, 44-21. Too much speed on every facet of the game. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television. Have a good day.